All right, everybody. It took a little while, but we made it. Face check is back at you. Season two, episode one, LCS 2020 upon us. New season, new frames. Same guys here, Dom, Loco, and Degon to bring you uh, the preseason look at LCS 2020. Guys, how's it going? How was your holiday? How was streaming? How was everything? Well, I moved to a new house and our net's been dodgy, so I couldn't stream as much. And holidays have been like forever ago and I didn't go home, so it's just- Do you have Spectrum? Yeah, I have Spectrum. Okay, that's why it's dodgy, if you're wondering. Uh, (laughs) You know, like, our only options are Spectrum, or we Mm -hmm. pay like 5k a month for Google Fiber. Yeah. I mean, I, I would pay five. Like, the thing is, they wouldn't even give me Google Fiber because I live in a, an apartment building. I literally called them. I was like, okay, I'll get a business line. I'll pay like 5K, 10K a month, like whatever. And they're like, okay, sure, let's do it. And I was like, awesome. And they're like, just kidding. You live in an apartment. We're not going to do anything. So <laughs> I've literally just had my stream crash for the last three years. And I just want anyone to know, like, if you're considering getting internet and you have an option to not get Spectrum, never get Spectrum. They are the worst internet service <laughs> provider in the nation. They lost a billion dollar lawsuit when they were time warner so they name changed so don't get confused no it's it's not a different company no it's still it's still time warner it's still ran by the same people they're still scamming people they're still promising certain internet speeds they can't ever match up to so just in case anyone had had any idea of like getting spectrum just never do it all right well Well, there goes that spectrum Spectrum uh, about sponsorship (laughs) Sponsorship. i mean you you want to know why clg is going to be so shit they're sponsored by spectrum that is literally the reason why the team is not going to fucking make worlds this year it's because of spectrum uh okay daniel how was your holiday (laughs) (laughs) i know dude two minutes in we got the spicy take it was good Mm -hmm. it was it was good back in virginia spent time at home i did nothing except play solo queue so uh if i ran into any of you incels in there Screw you Incels. guys. <laughs> Is that too big of a plot? word? I didn't did you no. make it out of plot? No, uh, okay. did not. I did not. Oh, so you're one of them. I am. <laughs> I am uh, one of those guys that Dom was doing VOD review on in his last solo queue game. We saw that. Oh, my <laughs> no, God. Daniel, that was a diamond player. You are not one they of were, those. They were not playing. <laughs> they were, they were not, not looking those, like okay? diamond players. I was going to hit the wave and bring it forward. I wasn't gonna yeah. go far. <laughs> Look, what, what is your th- what is your take on that macro? We killed three. Get Baron thirty seconds on the death timers. We're on top of the mid wave with Baron. Aphilios oh. goes farms oh. the jungle camp. Sona backs and Cassio goes bot. How it's insane. better to split? And Sona needed mana so she could auto attack in it. It's better to split. Oh yeah, it's better to split. Yeah, I agree. When when Ziggs is alive and he has a bunch of wave clear, you can split two fucking lanes. When their whole team is fucking dead, you take the inhibitor. It's so fucking easy. Ah, uh, I just can't play this game anymore, man. I'm just too old. I'm going to have a fucking heart attack soon. I'm Dom figured it out. Who needs therapy when you can just rant about it on the shows? Yeah, exactly. That's why I exactly. ask multiple. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for everyone being here. Let's kick things off with the uh, first bit of news that we had with LCS. So starting off with the big news that LCS came out with, I guess they hit a lot of things, 2020, a bunch of new games, but we're talking about the competitive scene. So kicking things off with the schedule. LCS changing its format, LCS now changing its schedule as well, the way that things are going to work. So instead of just being a Saturday, Sunday thing, they've now expanded to four days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with Academy Rush as their new thing and having like a premier Academy game on Friday. And then Monday, they'll have one premier or two premier Academy games and Monday Night League where they highlight one big matchup or two big matchups. So they said they would highlight two matchups, and I saw the schedule, and I saw Golden Guardians in some of the matchups. I'm like, this is a fucking lie. <laughs> they literally said marquee matchups. They said two marquee matchups, so I thought it would be like a very biased, like Monday is only for TL, TSM, C9, CLG, but it's not like that at all. Yep. I mean, I, that team is going to fucking suck, like a guaranteed. I was I was almost going to call them 0-18, but I, I know they're going to get some random wins. Like, they'll, they'll randomly pop off and win, but Jesus Christ, that team looks so doomed. Mm. Oh, another thing I wanted to bring up regarding the Academy being more incorporated and why Riot's finally doing this. Everybody in the world knows Academy is worthless. Like, the teams don't really care about it. Riot Mm -hmm. doesn't really care about it. And the biggest problem with it is Academy is so far distant from LCS in terms of, like, quality of the game. And, like, realistically, if you're good in Academy, are you going to be good on stage? Like, that's a huge problem that the teams have been having. Like, our guys are good in Academy, but Academy games don't really matter because it's not on stage. And then Riot's reply to that was, every time we turn on the studio, it cost us somewhere between fifty to 100000 They told me around the benchmark of the real number, 
But if you consider everybody working there, if you consider how much it takes to actually turn on a studio and run it, it costs so much. So their solution was, well, we'll just tack on Academy Games to any time we actually use the LCS studio. That's why like, there's Academy Games sprinkled out. <laughs> yeah, but Friday is mean, completely dedicated to Academy. That seems to be like a big... No, that's an online day. That's an online day. Mm. So Academy Rush is four Academy Games played at the same time. And one Academy game, like, played fully. That's, like, the marquee Academy matchup also. Uh, it's, it's just so sad from my perspective because it's like, it's like, yeah, dude, no one watches them anyway, so we'll just put them all at the same time. Like, fuck it. Like, it's literally like, just the most efficient way to get them all out of the way. Like, it, like even the fucking people that are in Academy don't even want to watch the other Academy games. Like, they're just like, just fucking do it all at the same time. Get it over with just so we can say we had the league. So, on, on that end, it is a little bit of, like, trying new things, but also um, the producer daniel what's his name oh my god which one it's it's blanking me uh stewart the one uh, dave stewart dave. dave stewart so he's uh, he used to work at fox sports so this is a lot of traditional sports being brought over there's nfl red zone which is just you show cl- you show multiple nfl games and you hop between anytime there's action anytime people are in the red zone so that's what academy rushes and also for monday night league it's Blant ripoff of uh, Monday Night Football. And yep. the reason why they're doing it is in Western culture, you are n- you don't do stuff on Saturdays and Sundays. Like, you don't watch stuff on Saturdays and Sundays. Like, you're always going out. So there's, like, that midday game for football. But Western culture is going out on Saturday, Sunday. So nobody does anything on Mondays. That's why they've been doing Monday Night Football, and they're carrying over the same idea to Monday Night League. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, Monday Night Football is just, some, like, a super hyped game normally. I mean... Obviously, when you schedule it before the season, you can't really know which teams are going to be good and which teams are going to be bad. But I think that in general, it's just going to it's a way to give like a bunch of attention to it. And I think it's just one extra day of of LCS to just like draw hype to because I feel like all the other leagues, like if you look at um the Chinese league, if you look at LPL, you look at LCK, they have way more days of league than we do. Like LCK last year was five nights a week. Um, LPL, I think it was six nights uh, mm-hmm. last week. Like they just do. They have way more broadcast than we do. And I feel like. This is Riot's way of being like, hey, like our league should get the same level of exposure. Yeah, I, I think so. But at, at the same time, one, at what cost? And two, the quality of it, right? The reason why they didn't do it beforehand, it was like, ah, it was very expensive. They just got acquired by Tencent. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and find ways to cut costs. So we'll just cut Degon and then we'll give that salary to everybody else. And that's one <laughs> way to save money. And so... Yep. Uh, I think one thing that they definitely don't want to do is drop in quality. So my question is, how do they fix that now on Saturday and Sunday? You're not you're dropping quality in terms of the games. If you're just playing Academy games on Monday and having that, you know, on stage like that to me doesn't seem like a fix here. I, I don't think it's going to be that high of drop in quality. And probably the idea is long term. If you allow Academy players to play more on stage games, Academy quality gets better. And we can kind of spoon feed. It's supposed to be mutually beneficial, right? People watch LCS games and then now they just stay behind and then watch Academy games. And then now Academy gets better and then long term it'll be better. At least that should be the thought process behind it. Yeah, too bad Academy is never going to have anyone care about it. So, <laughs> like, like it just, it's just not going to work. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm hyped for the LCS games on Monday, but the Academy games, yeah. yeah. Fuck those games. I, Bro, you, th- you think I, you think I'm I'm waking up I'm waking up early to fucking watch the Lego play? Like, come on, you let's, definitely let's are. Fucking... No, how are we gonna do this the Lego watch? I, mean... <laughs> I know for a fact you've watched the Lego Academy game. Yeah, you're in I the just like chat. Sleeko, you're in the bro. chat. You're yeah, in no, the I, chat. Though. I'm there. I'm there. I, I'm there just to flame Lego though. Plus, I've been playing with him. He's actually like like better now. Oh. But now it's just a meme. <laughs> He's better now. It's, He's awesome. Yeah, it's, he's, but think about this. Think about this. He's better now than he was back then, and he was playing LCS back then, and now he's playing Academy. Like, think about how fucking bad he must have been in those LCS games. I stand by what I said before, that he was the worst player to ever play LCS mid. So. Dude, Dom's the typical League of Legends player. He's like, fuck Riot, fuck the Lego. I'm never going to watch your games again. And then he's in the chat going, the Lego so bad. This game is so yeah, bad. But, but, I don't know why I'm to, watching this. I wish you had something else to do. You have to, you have to <laughs> I understand have that that, things to do. I woke up at 7 a.m. You know I could be fucking sleeping right now. You have to understand that when I'm flaming Saligo, most of the time, I'm not actually like flaming him with any basis in those games. It's literally like, oh, he's playing right now. And then I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing nothing. Oh, might as well just go in, type a couple lines, just let people know I'm there, flame him real quick, and then go back to my daily activities. I'm not actually there spending time I mean, investing into Saligo. 
<laughs> you can rationalize it however you want, but you're getting up and you're there for the legal games and you talk about how bad Academy is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's for the meme. It's for the meme. Yeah. Mm. Be, be nice to our Twitch Rivals champion uh saligo uh speaking mm-hmm. of twitch rivals just quick diversion dom you're gonna be on twitch rivals how's that how's your um, scrims how's practice going we, we've lost like uh we've lost like every game of scrims we literally win every early game and then throw every single game no matter what happens we throw every single game but uh yeah i don't know i feel like like on on game day we definitely have a chance like, we we'll just have to you're be, on uh you're on Tyler One's team, right? So it's yep. you, Hi, Tyler One, Adrian, mm-hmm. and who do you have at bottom? Metaphor? Metaphor is my support. <laughs> Hi is my mid laner. You have Hi and yourself. How are you guys throwing shit? Yeah. Well, <laughs> this I mean, sounds it, like a lot of voices. Uh, it's it's because like we just we, Blame we don't someone. have. Call them out. Call them out right now. Who is the it? The thing is, the, so is this, is, this is the main problem. Start this drama. Well, uh, the, the main problem is this: we don't play anything that's like good late game. Like we don't play like good late game champions at all. Like if you look at like pro play, it's like MF and like Senna, Aphilios, like Cassiopeia, like all these fucking champions. And like we can't play any of that shit. So we only play like m- like strong early game, mid game assassin things. So our comps are literally like. Olaf, Camille, Akali, Zach, support, and a fucking Karthus. <laughs> like it gets to the team fight, and we just get raped. No matter what happens, we just get fucked. It's so sad, dude. Oh man, it's right. really depressing, dude. It's really depressing. Well, again, Twitch travels tomorrow. Best of luck. We'll uh, we'll dive back on in. I'll be hosting that, and I'll be oh, cheering it. you on. Um, <laughs> to close out with the LCS, also just. Quick touch on, we don't want to dive deep on it. A uh, little bit of the change in playoffs now. A spring playoffs only leads to MSI. It's double elimination for first through fourth plays, five and six. They still make playoffs, but uh, they only have, they start in the losers bracket. What? How do you feel like that's going to change the way teams tackle spring playoffs, it, just playoffs in general, knowing that they have like two chances to get through? I don't, I don't think it changes how teams approach it. I just think that it gets you a better result most of the time. Like you get, you get a more accurate um you get you get a more accurate uh like second through sixth place ranking mm. with 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 the teams which i think is super important and i hope that it's successful and then they just move this into worlds because so many times like like the just the stories are so much less interesting because there's no double elimination there's no like comeback story it's like oh that team lost okay well see them next year like there's no there's no like hype like oh shit they're in the losers bracket and they're like mounting this fucking comeback they get back to the finals fought their way through the whole losers bracket then they're there they improve from like their loss because obviously like, when you lose in playoffs like you're gonna learn the most at that point right so like the teams that can actually adapt the teams that can actually improve will be able to go forward and like we'll we'll have just better storylines the, the finals will be more hyped because of it yeah i mean for sure i don't think there's any reason not to have double elimination and then the big argument against it is like traditional sport doesn't do it, but like we're not traditional sports. Like we don't have to copy directly what traditional sport does. Like it's yeah. completely different. I mean, so. I mean, it's also like okay, football you can't do double elimination because they're literally like the players <laughs> are literally getting each brain damage. Yeah, they are getting brain damage. Other. Like, like okay, I understand that in NA us playing a couple more games is kind of contributing to our brain damage, but it's not at the same degree that professional football is. All right, so they need to just man the fuck up play a fucking double elimination and have some results that make more sense from the two to six place teams. Mm. I think the other big one is dropping points completely from spring. This is right. Just openly saying like spring doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So what's your take on that one? Well, for me, I think maybe they're putting some more emphasis on MSI. Maybe there's more money in place. There's got to be something that makes <laughs> what? Teams, uh, that's a there's fucking gotta good be meme. something there that teams will value for the spring. Because we've always talked about it. It's like, oh, MSI is oh. your reward. And then they come back, they have the MSI hangover, start slow, and then those no, top cheating teams. Cheating yourself into God, worlds r- off of earning the points is the Jesus, worst. Now that's Riot, not there. Riot really brainwashed Egon while he was there. Like, holy moly. No, no, no. I'm you just think, saying. It, they know, they how many years has it been? Like how many years has it been? <laughs> how many years has it been? It's been uh, what? Two and a half years. Oh, wait. I think, you know what, Dom? I think it's, I think I know what it is. They extended it? to Friday and Monday broadcast also, so they might need more casters and hosts. Oh, <laughs> not shit. all the way gone yet. Like, yep. you and me, yep. we're all the way done. We're done. There, there's no yep. repairing that bridge. But I'm Daniel, he, he's almost there. I'm yep. just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. I, it's keeping the door open. Okay, we they're, get it. They're, they're not doing <laughs> shit. They're, they're not going to give you money. money for MSI. <laughs> you got to keep that relationship alive. No need to burn the bridge. Oh, we get it. We get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see that happening. I, I just think <laughs> I think that it's just going to be like, yes, yeah, spring split shouldn't really matter because 
<laughs> I mean, it'd be weird, right? Like in no other sport do the, does the first half of your season matter at all. Like, right. It's not like, oh shit, like the fucking NBA, you do really well in the first half of the season. It's like, oh, you get points for like, it's like your record, whatever. But it really all that matters is like who makes playoffs, who fucking is good when, uh, when crunch time hits. And I just, I, I don't like that, that I don't like that. There's actually no value to spring at all, but realistically if you want to have a more competitive world championship there's so many times that we see these teams that perform well in spring and are dog shit in summer and then they go to worlds and it's a fucking embarrassment like 100 thieves in 2018 <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's just it's one. just fucking depressing it's like like they're not even playing with their starting ad like ricara is like an academy player i don't even know if he's in the academy anymore i don't know what the fuck happens to him but he was playing at worlds for some reason instead of cody's son and it's like why is this team get why does this team get to fucking play with with their level of skill at that current moment. It makes no sense. I think what they should do is actually just extend summer and make summer like your league and then open up spring to third party tournament organizations or organizers. So we can have MLGs back, we can have IEM back and you still have the franchise league and it's more epic because there's that one split and people also get so burned out by summer anyway. So just kill spring all together and have more fun tournaments. Yeah, you know what? Just just take all the spring off. Just start the league. Have it be like three months long. Starts in fucking June, and then just yeah, June until October. We have League of Legends. The rest of the time, we just kill this dead game. <laughs> we hold tournaments. We hold like Tyler one tournament, but actually Riot produces it and makes it good. And then we actually have venues and that, stuff. Then it's and not. Then it's not fun. Then it's not like the, the Tyler whole, one tournament. Yeah, the whole point of Tyler one's tournament is you have like train wrecks who doesn't know anything about the game, and then like me who's just like perma flaming, just casting this like train wreck of a stream with like the audio like desynced and the fucking like the the replays and the cameras like <laughs> cutting out. Like all that shit makes it such a good tournament. If you start producing it well, it's like damn, this is now just like a pro- it's a professional tournament just with like worse gameplay. Uh, maybe we don't do TCS, but we just hold independent tournament during the time spring is there. Cause like the Mafia Cup or Kespa Cup or whatever, Rift Rivals, like maybe mini international tournament, but it just feels so repetitive. And now spring doesn't mean anything. So it's just, what are we doing here? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just like a good way for like the teams to like have like a competitive environment and just like start preparing for like, or start improving towards worlds. It's like, okay, so where are these teams starting? Like, how, how good are they? What can they do? Like, what are the, the best, like, rosters that they can go into summer with? And, like, what are they going to be looking at, at shoring up for when they get to that second half of the season that really matters? I feel like it's kind of just, like, it, it's good to, for me, I like just being able to see, hey, how good are these teams right now? Like, what are the, like, base, like, the starting levels of all these players? Like, how do they come together originally? And then see, like, which teams improve faster? Because I feel like a, a lot of times you'll be able to, like, um, have teams that will, like, gain a lot of respect a lot of interest with like their level of improvement so like uh, for last season i i consider like clg one of these things right where you see yeah. like them be terrible in, in the spring split like one of the worst teams maybe the worst team in the entire spring split and then like they shoot darshan yeah then they they just they, yeah exactly <laughs> they, they kill shoot, the president <laughs> yep they they <laughs> kill mr president and then suddenly they're top three you know almost make worlds i like seeing that improvement well both of you guys as a, a former player and coach what would you like? I agree. Like having tournaments that show where teams are at that time is very good. But what would be worth it? Right. It's the same reason why we're talking about MSI like as worthless. What would be worth it to have that type of tournament? Well, you know, if, if a riot you know, like was able to get their their tournaments at other events, like other to- other big uh, esports games, having like majors would be a really good. International competition before yeah. leading into summer for regional competition and meeting up for the mega like international competition at Worlds. I think that'd be really nice too. Isn't that what MSI mm-hmm. is though? It, it's one tournament, Daniel. We're, I'm saying kill spring altogether and every. I mean, M- MSI is such a shit tournament too, though. If you like look at like the format of it, it's like okay, there's six teams that, that like actually end up like qualifying for it, and then four of them get to playoffs, and then it's like one semifinals, one finals, and that's it. Like out of two semifinals, one finals, that's it. It's just so like boring as as a spectator, and like you don't even know the the skill level of the teams at the end because it's like shit. Like is like is SKT actually worse than TL at last MSI? I don't fucking think so. I bet you if TL had to play against SKT, they would just get railed. So I know Riot has a hard on for making like international tournaments like the biggest thing ever, and they're like, if you have more international tournaments, then it won't be as special. It's just 
Uh, that's why like people like MFI and that's why people look forward to MFI because we only get two international tournaments a year. But we have so much international teams now and storyline is going to be so different every time. I don't get why we just can't have more. I, Maybe I'm just a know. hater, but I just I really dislike MSI. Like I don't care about MSI at all. Like because mm-hmm. like, at the end of it, I never feel confident in the results. Like at the end of it, it's not like last season. So I see TL just get 3 0 like put into the fucking dumpster by G2, and then I'm supposed to sit there and be like, yeah, I think TL is the second best team in the world. Like, yeah, that makes <laughs> like what the fuck? I don't think they're the second best team in the world. I think that they like had one good set for IG and then they ended up in finals. That's that's how I feel about it. So I just never like the results don't mean anything to me in, in MSI. Mm. All right, let's get us to the next topic, Dana. All right, well, we're speaking a lot about international matches. We have international issues with one of our top imports coming on in. Broxa having visa issues. It's all over Twitter. Uh, what is TL to do? Well, they had multiple options. They were talking about uh, possibly using Sure and Fire, who now is also having international visa issues as well. They signed Mike Young off of the uh, off of the street because uh, <laughs> yeah. Mike Young That's was where part he belongs of that after that last split he played. Let me tell you, he's back after on that last split. <laughs> yep, he needs to be on the street permanently after that. All right? So that was uh, bad shit. Where, how, how do you think this TL team is going to do now that the big POB is back on in? Everyone knows that 200 IQ, 300 IQ play where he just walks in, leaves in back in season four and kills a guy without seeing anything. That's the last time we've seen him there. What's TL going to look like here in the first couple weeks? Dom, do you know if Pobelter's secondary is normally jungle? I remember it being uh, tough. I mean, he plays like he kind of played everything. I think for a while it was like AD secondary, and then there was a there was a little bit actually where he was gonna play support competitively. Like uh, every mid laner says that every mid laner is support. <laughs> yeah, but those, those every time like, they feel bad about their mechanics, they're like, "Oh, support that looks easy." Yeah, I'll I mean, that, that's what everyone does, dude. Like, if I come back to LCS, I'll be playing support. That's a no finger fucking roll, man. You play Nautilus and Leona, and you have aftershock. You have like three hundred armor level fucking two, and so, and you're unkillable, and you de- deal more damage than jungler. It's just such a broken brain dead roll. But I, I mean, I, I think that was actually a legitimate situation where Pub Walter was playing support and like. It was rumored that he was going to be the starting support for an LCS team at a point, but um, yeah, obviously that didn't happen. Uh, I think I think that that jungle like there was times where he played jungle secondary. I think he kind of just puts top secondary now, but jungle secondary he was like a really good Lee Sin player back in the day, which is normally a, a lot of mid laners have this thing where they they play mid lane and then if they ever get auto filled, they just want to play Lee Sin jungle because <laughs> they have massive egos and they need to show how good their mechanics are at all points. So. Um, I mean, he's definitely familiar with with the role, and he's smart about competitive play. But I mean, jungle and competitive play, like when you're jungling for TL and you have winning lanes, it shouldn't be that difficult for him. I feel like jungle's so unforgiving nowadays. Like if you die or make the wrong invade or you get invaded on, like you just get fucked. There's no catch up XP, so I feel really afraid for any like new jungler coming in and jungling. No, it doesn't matter. Look, look, go watch my Twitch rival scrims. I'm two levels up every single game, and we still manage to lose every single one. It actually just, it actually just doesn't matter at all. Jungle is just so irrelevant. Wait, isn't that tainting the jungle role from like how your Twitch rivals has been going? Because you're talking about your play, all these early game fucking champions. I think in like normal competitive play, when junglers get behind, they should be getting blown out. Nah, it's fucking NA, dude. NA and Twitch rivals is just, it's not even that different, man. Two level leads just doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope Poe can do well because, oh man, it's going to look so bad on Poe Belter. Like, and it's not really even his fault. Like, I hate being in like awkward situations like that where you have to do something and you're not the right person for it and you're not even all the way ready for it, but it's still an opportunity. I, I really, I feel like it's just like a win-win. Like, he, like I don't think there's a world, like, I don't I don't think that people are so delusional that he autofills to jungle and then they start like judging his entire career off of it. At least I hope not. No, 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 no. What? No, no, no. what? What yeah, Daniel? Don't, don't are you are you guys new to the internet? Oh, I think that's what it's gonna I, I be. Haven't, I haven't I haven't seen that for like for like other other players that have like subbed in like off rolled and shit like that. Mm. Like I've seen it. Like obviously, there's times where it's if it's supposed to be a legitimate thing. Like if it's not visa mm. issues, if it's supposed to be like, hey, Perks is now playing eighty carry, then there's gonna be like more scrutiny on it. But I think when it's like it's like fucking week one, two games, and some guys auto filled, like I, I don't really see it being that big of a deal. Yeah. Do you remember um, when CLG had to like sub their whole roster and they had like Hot Shot come back? They had yep, that's Joey right, that coming in play. Cool. It's the same that's type like of thing. Five man joke. No one. No. This back. is like a. No this one is a play. Like, Hot Shot is terrible. You. I don't I mean, even remember how no. he was good in the first place. No one did that. No one did that. Yeah. I mean. I mean. There's also like like other examples. There's Winter Fox where like. 
Uh, Altec played like support for like two games, and their mm. coach Paragon played eighty carry, and no one really cared that Altec wasn't that Paragon good. Paragon and Avalon. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, people, that was pretty much what everyone said. Was they're like, "God damn, like this this nepotism with Helios getting his brother as a top laner, like this is some bullshit. Like this guy fucking sucks. He's like a diamond level Korea player, and he actually just got on the team because his brother's a jungler. That's what the whole story was about. So I think it'll be fine, dude. Also, in true TL fashion, like they reached out to everyone. Like as you guys mentioned, Mike Young, I'm sure Tarzan would have gotten reached out to, like if he was able to play. Cause he's also Canadian, like he has problems. And I heard from a lot of top tier solo queue players like that haven't seen competitive play. They got reached out to also. So they were considering so many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> taking a look at the tweet that Steve put out here, just, uh, it wasn't just Brox. It was sure and fire and Kane as well, having some issues. We hope that they may all be able to compete at the start of the season, but that may not happen. This has also affected our January team practice. We're evaluating backup options but the reason why i pulled this up not so much for steve but if we look just a little bit closer underneath i'm scuffed uh you can see right here <laughs> dusting off the keyboard is our boy dom right there <laughs> they, did they actually talk to you talk to you about it even like um, you know just no, it, was, it was like i, I like i think that i think that if i wanted to like really really do it i could have like tried for it yeah probably like, I, I don't think just jungling in competitive is as crazy as people make it seem. Like, bro, you're playing fucking Olaf and full clearing your first clear. I think I can still do that. Bro, like, you're an LCS veteran of three years. Of course, of course you can do it, but... Uh, did did they actually talk to you? Did you have a talk with Steve? Did you have a talk with any of the players? Um, No, I talked to, like, my manager within TL. And it's like, <laughs> and it was like, it was just like, hey, would, like, I, like, is this something you would ever consider? And I'm like... Nah, I'm, I just kind of like, because I have a lot of stuff, like, obviously I'm doing this show, I'm doing the Crackdown, and like, I don't want to like, I, I don't want to fucking overload my schedule, I'm doing Twitch. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to come and do the show after you get wrecked, that's well, what you mean. No, no, I'm, I'm fine with playing LCS, honestly, like, I, I have like, I have a decent amount of confidence, I think that people would, would be pretty surprised that I could still play, like, oh. LCS, like, I'm still fucking. There's only one way player. to prove it, you were never going to get the chance, and it's fucking playing for TL, it's playing with double lift, it's playing sad, with dude. impact, that would have been the best opportunity, and you shut it down. That was the for, big game one. Oh, well, I don't yeah. know, you, 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 you can't tell me, you can't tell me, you would have been okay with playing LCS, and it would have been for TL and you didn't take it and tell yeah. me it would have been okay. You just said your whole career wouldn't have been judged if you just subbed in for a week. This was a win-win opportunity. <laughs> and you also yeah. always exactly. talk about well, your teammates being shit. You always exactly. talk about your teammates being shit. Your exactly. teammates would be literally the best in the league. So you would have no excuse. Yeah, that no, was, I mean, I'll, I'll, shot. I, I, I would be down, down to fucking play if I wanted to, like, do that stuff at that point. But, like, yeah, I mean... Oh, no. Spectrum. Um, Po and Poe Belter was like already like subbing in for scrims and stuff and, it was, and apparently it's been going like pretty well like he's been doing pretty well in scrims so there's like no reason for me to be like all right dude I'm gonna fucking compete for that spot with Poe Belter like he's already <laughs> at the fucking like studio like he's already at the office every single fucking day I'm sitting here streaming it's like I would lose so much fucking like revenue momentum all that shit just to like do it I, I just didn't think it would be something that would be like super super worth also wow. there's a, also like the way it was phrased to me wasn't mm -hmm. even like it was like an 100% thing. It was like, Broxa might not make it. That's like what, what they said. Like, it was like, Broxa will still like, still has like pretty good chance of making it. But like, it would essentially be me subbing in for like scrims and shit like that. And it would be like, okay, so I lose all my momentum on Twitch, all my momentum on everything. And I probably won't even get to play because in my mind, Broxa is still going to like, Broxa was still going to make it at that point. Damn. <laughs> Why didn't you just ask if you can stream the scrims? I'm sure the <laughs> yeah. LCS teams wouldn't have minded. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I should I should have asked that. So, um, looking on Twitter just a couple hours ago, so I made these, you know, yesterday. Shernfire did get his visa approved and will be coming over very soon. Um, do you feel like you would play with Shernfire, a proven jungler, over Pope, or would you just work with Pope there because he's at the scrim reps? Um, Pope outside for sure because he already has yeah. the scrim reps. Like if his visa just got approved. Then what? Shermfire comes here and he plays with like no scrims with the team. I, that's way too dangerous. Yeah, like I, mean, I think I think I, I think it's I think it's just so easy, so much easier to play with Poe Welter. Also, Poe Welter is like been competitive player. Like he understands like how the game fucking works, bro. He saw how little like, Smithy had to do to make his team win. He know he knows that like he could just do the same thing. <laughs> just walk around, fucking cover lanes, drop some words. Like you're good. Yeah, it's basically what he did on uh, FlyQuest last year. Yep. Um. The other thing no, that no, I... he he entered way harder on flight. <laughs> he, he he didn't just walk around drop boards. He walked into the enemies and died frequently. 
The the other <clears throat> angle I wanted to look at this is the impact on Team Liquid as a whole because their first two games are marquee games. They're playing against TSM and Cloud9. How do they stack up with Pobe in the jungle and how it completely changes their synergy knowing that they haven't been able to scrim with Broxa for a while? No, I don't think it's an impact on TL. I think TL is going to be fine. I think once they get Broxa, they'll get yeah. first place or they'll get at least top two. Who it's going to impact is the teams that got to play TL with Pobe out there and then the teams later on in the season that got to play TL with Broxa. Those are the ones that are going to get fucked. I think that's like the worst like thing that's going to come out of this Pobe yeah, out there uh, subbing uh, in for Broxa thing. Kind of, but like at the same time, it's TSM and, and C9. Like they're, they're playing against good teams, right? So since they're playing against like really good teams that are probably going to be at the top anyway, I don't think it's going to affect it that much. I would be much more like... I would agree with this point a lot more if it was like teams that are going to be fighting for playoff spots like Dignitas, 100T, like FlyQuest potentially, because those are the teams where it's like, holy shit, one or two games could really matter between like you just being sent home and you being able to like continue playing for mm. potentially a title. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Well, so that's Brox's issues. Pogue coming on in. Other options explored. Dom had the opportunity to raise his stock forever, but... I guess we'll never know. <laughs> that shit doesn't fucking matter at all, dude. That's the thing that I've realized is like how how you perform in LCS doesn't actually have any impact on people like how they view you. The main thing is just like if the community likes or dislikes you. That that's like really what what determines like how good they think you are, right? Like as soon as I fucking when I was in LCS, like I went from from being all pro second team in my final split to like the next split. I literally saw Reddit threads where like I where like I had like hate threads or whatever, and I saw like. That hundreds of upvoted comments that I just like was one of the bottom tier LCS junglers. Like that, that's just what people said about me. So it's just it, what I've realized is like how you play in LCS, people forget so fast. And not even not only that, the way the League, League of Legends community works is if you're like if people view you as like somebody that's like hated, then you're just also fucking bad. Like this, like it's impossible to be hated and good. It's not like, oh, that guy's a fucking dick, but he's also really fucking good at the game. It's never like that. It's like, oh, Tarzan's rank one. Well, he only got rank one abusing graves. He actually just fucking sucks. And he win traded every fucking game for like that. Like the community just will always just do the mental gymnastics to try to shit on anyone who they deem as like being a piece of shit. Yeah. I mean, Solo's a really nice guy, but some idiot keeps saying he's really <laughs> rude on shows. So ah. everyone thinks Solo's a garbage yeah. player now. Definitely, definitely. Thing. Definitely I didn't have anything to do with him inting and, and getting benched for Lorlo last split. <laughs> oh my god, more hearsay, more hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Jesus. best of luck to Solo, best of luck to Brox and the rest of TL as we uh, watch how they will yeah. unfold with their matches with Poe Belter moving forward. All right, so next up, we have... A segment just for this preseason. It's our hot takes for 2020. We asked, we all got asked, what are our five big takeaways from this season? Our hot takes uh, that we're predicting to go on into the season. So let's take a look at some of those. We'll start with Dom. Uh, Dom's first up. And I think Dom had some of the, to me, some of the best ones. Uh, Dom, take it away. Your list is up on screen now. We starting with number one or, or yeah, all of them are on screen right now. All of them are, are on stream. Okay, okay. So first one that that I wanted to say, um, I guess the one that's most important to me is I think that that Johnson is actually going to be like the new NA AD carry talent. Like we haven't had a really good North American AD show up since like Cody Sun in 2017. <laughs> if you say definitely, I swear to fucking god, I swear Keep to god, going. I'm fucking say Keep definitely. Going. Keep There's going. a reason he's on EG's fucking. Daniel, he has a second show. We have to be on better behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I suck a no dig. <laughs> Definitely is the best. Go. <laughs> uh, so even though Johnson has a forty percent win rate in solo queue, thirty nine percent before before yesterday, and even though like I fucking played five games duo queue with him yesterday, and I demoted from Grandmaster while playing with him, I still think he will be like the <laughs> best North American AD that, that came out in the last like few years. I think that he's actual NA talent. Um, like he, he just understands the game and his mechanics are just solid. So I expect him to have like a really good performance to split. A lot of people are kind of like confused about why he's going to be on this team. A lot of people view him as like the weak link. Like this is like what's going to determine if Dignitas is bad or not. It's like how good Johnson is because they see Afro, they see Froggen, uh, they see um, Hooney top. They're just like, oh, this team is like fucking stacked with like veterans and really good talent. If anyone plays poorly, it'll be the, the new AD. I don't think he's going to have any issue like him playing well personally. I think that this team is not actually going to be super good, but I think he's going to be one of the strongest parts of this team. 
Wow, so, can I get boosted by challenger players also if I say <laughs> nice things about them on stream? Holy I fuck. literally that, win. Dude. I that win every real? game solo. I do it with him. I lost five games in a row. <laughs> like, uh -huh. like he, he unironically tanked my fucking win rate from 60% to 53. All right. So I, I, I don't want to hear it about that. Okay. So take number two. Um, I think IMT as a whole, like this, uh, this, I don't know if this got misconstrued. I said IMT as a whole is washed up. I think this is going to be a washed up team. I don't think they have like the mechanics in the early game to compete with these other teams. I think that Smithy and Soaz are going to get exposed. And I, I think that this team is going to be one of the absolute worst teams in the entire league. Um, I've, I've talked to other players about Ica. How good is Ica really? I don't really watch um, the LFL or like the French League or whatever. Yep. I don't watch that shit at all. All I know about this player is he was in LCS and then he was relegated to Academy for the rest of his career. And then suddenly he's joining this team. This team just reeks of just French fucking bias. It's like, okay, so you got a French coach and then you get this random French mid laner and you get so as it's like, oh, you just love fucking France, I guess. I don't care about that shit. I think the team's going to be garbage. I expect this to be one of the worst fucking teams in the league. So how good do you like, think x Mitty will be? I think Xmithy is actually like not very good right now. I think that that this this is really gonna hurt him. He's good when he has good lanes because he's smart about what to do. But I view him similar to Lee to like how I view myself, where I'm like, damn, if like if I had to play against like Blabber or like any of these motherfuckers, and like they have fucking insane mechanics, like they're gonna out mechanic me. If we're playing like literally Lee Sin. I'm never winning that, right? <laughs> Smithy's never winning that shit either. He's not going to fucking win that shit against Blabber. He's not winning that shit against even Broxa. He's not winning that shit against Dardock. Like, he's going to get exposed, and he this will be the end of him being considered a top jungler in a day. That's my Oof. take. He is going yeah. to be, this split, he is going to be considered one of the worst jugglers in a day. The it. worst? Not even middle one, pack? one of the worst. One, one of, of the worst. worst. So, like, yep. bottom three. There's no Yes, way. like, like we're going we're gonna to start getting, like, threads and shit that's, like, like you know how Afro was treated last year where it's like, can we just fucking have this motherfucker retire already? The community's losing their fucking mind. I expect the same shit to be happening with Xmithy. Yikes. That's, that's a big take. That, and that's also why I had... That's a bigger take than IMT will be yeah. shit. <laughs> that's, that's why I had X Smithy on there, because when you said specifically X Smithy would be exposed, I was like, that's mm -hmm. that's the spiciest. So just for context, Ike, the last time he played in the LCS, was in the EU mm -hmm. LCS when he was part of the Elements, Elements roster. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that's not a good thing to say. You don't want to talk about that. If that happened... Oh, like, no, I never played in LCS before. <laughs> this is my first time in Tier 1 League. So once mm -hmm. all that firepower, all the star power left, Ika came mm -hmm. in, played a season, got relegated, played two seasons in Challenger, and then disappeared into the LFL, where they did well in the uh, European Masters, and he showed well. So I think his KDA, I believe, over the last three years was like five and a half. So he's always been above average, and that's why he has his opportunity here. And you made a very good point, Dom, where this is a French roster, to me, the spotlight now is on Zabutin because he was kind of buoyed by having Crown in the mid lane before to at least Crown have Medios. that there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Crown and Medios. Now he has his work cut out for him with a kind of like this ragtag roster. He does have Ix Smithy, and I'm not as down as you are on him, but it's going to be a make or break season for Zabutin for as me, well. If for me, I just don't see the firepower anywhere on this roster. Like, who's the beast of this roster? Like, you see the other teams, and it's like, there's hope, right? Like, you know, when you look at Dignitas, <laughs> for example, when Huni and Froggen are playing really well, they can carry fucking games alone. Like, they, when they're playing well, they're really fucking good. They're some of the best players in their role when they're on. None of these players I see having that. Like, I don't think that Soaz is just going to be taken. I think Soaz is like a serviceable top laner. I think Xmithy is like a serviceable jungler. Ike is probably a serviceable mid, but it's like if you have a bunch of like role players on your team and no firepower, you're just not going to win. So they talked about it in their video. I'm not sure if anyone watched. No one watches like team content nowadays, but they talked about how they believe everyone on this team has a chip on their shoulder. Like Altec, he's coming back from solo queue. So as he's coming back from a bad year, uh, Ike, nah. he's coming back from all of I, I think what they meant. You I, really I, believe in each other. <laughs> we're no, gonna no, no. do well. They, Power of friendship. They they got this wrong. What they meant to say it's it's, it's the uh, French translation. They meant to say that all these players have a check <laughs> a check on their shoulder. They're all just getting fucking paid to be on this dog shit team and get shit on an LCS for a fucking split. That's what they meant. <laughs> okay, it's the I'm French here to translate. Translation. <laughs> yep. Dom French in high school. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> you understand better than me. The accent was too mm -hmm. thick, and I. I couldn't understand properly. Sure. Right, Dom, give me your number three. Uh, so, so my number, my number three is I think that Dardock is going to be the first uh, jungler on TSM to not break down and become a pussy 
over the course of the season. Like every 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 TSM jungler just becomes a bitch, right? Like that's just what happens. It just they just become just worthless at the at the end of like it. Just they are not ganking. They are only farming. They're just like trying to play around the right lanes, do the correct play all the time, and they just don't have any of like the fire in them. We saw it happen with with Acadian recently. We saw it happen with Svenskeren. We saw it happen with Santorin. Unironically, every player that plays for TSM looks the worst that they look in their entire career when they're on that team. Yeah. And I think that Dardoch's going to be the first player on that team, that the first jungler on that team that doesn't let that happen to him, that maintains his like his fire. And I think that he's actually going to like fall into line here. You know, I think that he's actually not going to be toxic and like ruin this team. I think he has enough respect for his teammates that he's going to perform to the best of his abilities. Like this is the time where I actually believe that Dardak is going to reform. Okay. From what I heard, Dardak's doing well on TSM and he's getting along well with everyone. I've heard that too. It always starts that way. Yeah. It never. Yeah. It, it never starts with like actually I, I, killing I, people I, from the get go. I, I heard that. I heard that that one of their first scrim sets, like I've been talking to some of the players um, mm-hmm. personally, and I'm pretty sure that this is completely fine to say. I heard that w- that early on there was a couple of those those situations in scrims where he wanted to FF, like he was being negative, and they sat down and talked to him immediately, like as they tried to nip it in the bud. And since then, he's really been a lot better um, mm-hmm. overall. So I th- I think that that this is the team. Like if there's if the, okay, either Dardock is just too fucking like psychotic to ever work in a team environment because like or this will be the team where he succeeds because you got to have respect for these types of players. Broken Blade's a fucking like monster recently. Bjergsen, you like, if you don't respect Bjergsen, I don't know who you can respect as a jungler, right? Like this guy has done it all. He was like the best player. Give me Faker in or else. Give me Faker or else. Yeah. I mean, if, if that's what it is, then just, just, all right, fucking his career is ruined. This team. And I think that he knows that this is his final shot. This is his biggest shot that he's got recently. And this is like, the last one that he's going to get. If it's just like the same bullshit where it's like, yep, he's toxic in a team environment and we start seeing like speak up playing in a, uh, in LCS <laughs> over him and shit. It's actually just doomed. It's actually just so fucking doomed for his career. So I think that this is going to be like the turning point for him. So um, for me but- though, it, 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 it just, you know, we always have these fairy tale stories and we've been, all three of us wanted to see this move happen so that Dardock does get that shot, but not everyone ends like that. Even if they know this is probably it, this is my best opportunity, I'm playing with one of the best, if not the best player in North America, I've got to get straight. It happens all the time when you see players get that other opportunity in traditional sports or yep. it just in general, and they just can't get their shit together. Like, they just can't do it. Yeah. Josh Gordon Antonio is in Brown. the NFL. Antonio Brown <laughs> is another person. They have the world at their fingertips. <laughs> They're in the greatest situation. You're playing for the Patriots, Antonio Brown and Josh yeah. Gordon. And they can't get it together. But I, I think that I'm those worried. players are, are also like a lot more far gone than like Dardock. Like like a lot of like the it's like okay, so like you got people like Adam Pac-Man Jones, where it's like, all right, if you're fucking out there in the club like murdering people and shooting up shit, <laughs> maybe you can't like reform your behavior. But if you're just like a little like if you're just being but like an I heard Dardock's toxic in solo he's, queue. He's very toxic. Okay, I true. watched Breaking Point. True. I, I heard he's toxic in solo queue too. But I've never seen him put a gun to someone's head. So maybe he's okay in this environment. So like that's all I'm <laughs> They didn't show you the deleted scenes in Breaking Point, did they? Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, so my, my fourth point is is the, is the um, so originally I had Sven regains form under uh, regains form under C9. So I think this is going to happen. I still think that this is like a take, but I think a more mm. important take or like a, uh, I guess a hotter take is I think that Blabber and Dardock are going to be the two best junglers in NA this year. And I think for a while, like for the last couple seasons, it's been like Sven Skaren and Smithy. That's what mm-hmm. we've seen. Those players are still in LCS. I really have a lot of confidence in Blabber starting for C9 and Dardock. I think he's going to do really well. I think they're on two of the best teams, so I think they'll look the best. Um, yeah, I think that these are just the two best players um, at the role in the region right now. Dom's so high on new talent and like yeah, 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 Dardock, Dardock, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm high on new talent. <laughs> Dardock's only been around Blabber for five years. Johnson. Yeah, Dardock. there's Ooh, okay. there's players that I that I respect and I don't like. I don't put okay. Obviously, if you've been good for a while, I weigh that. But I'd rather just have somebody who I know is good right now. Mm-hmm. You know, like like Ooh. so. For example, if, like Afro's had a much better career than than Johnson to this point, right? Like you have to say that Afro, like Afro was at his peak, one of the best sports in NA. I think that Johnson is a better AD right now for LCS caliber than Afro is as a support for, for LCS sure. caliber, regardless of career. So that's just my personal viewpoint on things. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't really view blabber and dardock as like unproven talent like mm. we've seen blabber play lcs before we know he's not like he doesn't choke under pressure he still is able to play aggressive on stage we've seen the same thing from dardock and also dardock is just like he's a he's a 
long-term LCS veteran at this point. Um, so. Let me ask you one question, and then we can go back to this event thing. Don't you think your point of view is a little bit um, biased? Because you get to see these players play in solo queue a lot more, and you get to play with them, you get to play against them. Sure. Where Xmithy and Spence Garen, they're not going to give a shit about solo queue. Okay, and I played against Xmithy yesterday in solo queue. I mean, he, they're, he, he's not, he's not going to take solo queue as seriously as someone like Johnson. Yeah, will. I think, I think like that's a problem one. though. Like, like all the, all the, people will, will say this all the time, right? Like, like, oh, well, these players are proven. They don't have to give a fuck about solo queue. I always see the players that are like playing the best at LCS are always try harding in solo queue all the time. Like mm-hmm. when, when I was in Europe, right? Like Caps was just rank one by far. He was just rank one by far. And he was performing the best out of everyone in LCS, like, or in LEC at the time, obviously. I, I normally see there's a, there's a pretty big correlation between like your level of your mechanics, at least like your laning, your early game, all that stuff. It like with your solo queue rank and how you uh, perform in competition. I think it's a little bit different because as you play LCS four and as you become a veteran, you like solo queue just so miserable. And when you're younger mm-hmm. and when you're starting up, like you want to put so much into solo queue. So veterans are smarter about doing doing things with what they have and getting the most out of scrims and getting the most out of the little solo queue they play and where i feel like the newer and the more revved up players just put in so much energy and so much work and they just spam games and they're winning through um uh, they're just winning they look better in solo queue for sure but i don't think that always directly translates into they're going to be better on stage i don't think it always directly translates but it always makes me feel more confident in in the player like when i see somebody try harding in solo queue I'd always rather see a player tryharding and doing well in solo queue than seeing a player just fucking run it down. Like, when, when I see somebody like Ruin playing on my team yesterday, playing Teemo support and going 0-6-0, I tend to lose faith in their, like, ability to continue improving. <laughs> what does CLG do to you? What? You shit them off for Spectrum. Now you shit them off for Ruin. What does what CLG do to you? Oof. Oh, absolutely nothing. I just like flaming. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go to your Zven take. Why do you think Zven's going to be good under C9? Um, I just feel like, okay, so this is this is partly just the fact that any player that leaves TSM just instantly becomes a lot better. I feel like just the stress-free free environment of C9 will just be good for Sven. I feel like the, the fact that TSM he was under the microscope all the time, I felt like that kind of like is what caused some of those breakdowns. I feel like being on a different team where it's like he has players that respect him, that are going to be listening to him more, like he's he's... I guess the like main veteran of that team now, like he's the one that's accomplished the most, at least in terms of like championships. I think he's the only player on that team that's ever won a championship before. Um, so I, I think that that uh, like that's just a better environment for him to succeed and take some like stress off him. Yeah, I also think he's not going to be under so much pressure where he mm-hmm. expected himself to come to TSM, be the first player to win both in Europe and both in LCS. Yep. And he didn't get that. He got something completely different. So internally, I feel like he struggled a lot. And now going to C9, he can rebuild himself from scratch. There's not going to be these kind of crazy expectations from the community, from the team, from himself. So yeah, I also really agree with your take. I think that also um, he has the reputation of being like a diva, kind of. Like that's he is. kind of yeah. yeah. So, On TSM, so, he definitely was. Okay, so people consider him a diva, right? And I guess. Bjergsen, to a lesser extent, has that same reputation where it's it's not like he's he's as much a diva, but he has like a very set way he wants to play. It's like he's very strong minded, and I feel like C nine is going to be willing to like listen to Sven more. Like there's less hard hitting personalities on that team. Like I don't think there's that many people with huge egos. Like from what I've heard, Ligurish obviously has has somewhat of an ego, but I think that he's much more easy to work with um, mm-hmm. potentially. Uh, Blabber obviously uh, he's like a newer newer player. This is going to be his first real starting. Uh, split as an LCS player. I just I just think that in general, just the environment is set up for Sven to succeed. So that's why I think he'll play a lot. Well, in split. speaking of Cloud9's environment, I, I think it's interesting now that you have this big void that's there now that Sneaky's gone. Not that, you know, Sneaky had a massive, you know, say on what how everything went, but I think there's something to be said about setting the tone and being there. And now there is no one there that was part of all of cloud nine since its inception and it's coming from Reaper. So now it's, Hey, was this set by the culture and can the players hold on to it or will Reaper be the one or is Reaper the one that's going to be driving it forward along with everyone else in that house? So I, I think it's kind of interesting to see knowing these personalities that are coming in. Sven is very different than the type of player that, is normally at cloud nine. Usually it's just, Hey, look, we put our head down. We like to play league and we grind. Whereas Van has a little bit, he likes to do that, but he has a little bit more of a, as you said, diva attitude with him. 
I, I disagree with I, that a little bit. I think I C9's, think I think C9's system forces his player to be not as vocal, and Reaper just has so much power on that team. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think Zaben will like fit in fine. He he can't come in there with the ego. Oh my god, can you imagine? He comes in there like yeah, <laughs> literally. If if he starts like like I just can see it right now. He comes in there with that ego like like yeah, I'm like I'm gonna be the first fucking player to win both both fucking regions, and and I'm I'm one of the best eighty carries in NA still. And I can just see see the first day Reaper just like goes into the vod of Spring Finals and shows that one <laughs> Ezreal death there, Baron, and it just just looks him right in the eyes, just like shut the fuck up. You're on our team now. You're gonna perform. You're gonna listen to me. That's what I see happening. <laughs> if that's how Sven regains for him on Cloud9, what's your last take here, Tom? <laughs> Give me uh, your final take. Okay, my, my final take is I think TSM is actually going to make it to spring finals again, just like last year. I think mm-hmm. that this team is going to be like a contender to potentially win it all. I was going to say that they were going to win spring, but I just couldn't say that they have like a higher chance of winning than TL. Like, I can see that happening, though. I feel like this team is like meant to succeed. They have like the perfect pieces that they want, you know? They have the really aggressive top side like they want to play top side right now right like they tried the the, the bot side stuff they got a, have a solid reliable ad who's not going to die he's going to perform when it when it matters they have a good fucking mechanical support that's going to be able to engage for them and they can play just through top side broken blade and dardock and they can just like carry games through that through that so i think that uh i think the tsm is, is going to be really good this play i think people are going to kind of like underrate them but i think that they'll they'll be one of the best teams if not the best team oh, i agree oh, man I- I, I Go ahead. yeah, just just because I'm a little bit closer to that, I've seen how we've rated things, and I agree. My big question is, can Broken Blade continue that form? You know, we have a lot of imports mm-hmm. that come in; they're good for that first split with the shock factor. How do they grow? Where do they go? Because he disappeared a little bit in Summer Split, where yeah. you know he he wasn't there at the very beginning of it, and then he found his form there at the end again. So. I agree. They have a lot of firepower. I think they have the most pieces out of any of the other teams trying to chase TL. But uh, it, now we have to see what that form is like and how the meta is going to treat them. What do you think, I, I just, Loco? I, okay. I think that's TSM feeling. I do think TSM can win. I do think TSM can be top two. But there's just so much questions. I know you really believe in Peter. Like Peter's my friend. Like I believe in Peter somewhat, but I'm not going to say it's like a they fucking knocked it out of the park by getting Peter. Like, Dardox also a risk. Broken Blade, as Daniel talked about, is a risk. Kabe, I think, will be solid. Biofrost, I think, will be, like, solid to, like, above average. Bjergsen will be great. It's just, I'm not as bought in. And as you talked about, this is going to be a very topside-focused team. If you just look at the names, Broken Blade and Dardox, last year, 2019, wasn't the best for them. Sure, they can be better in 2020, but it comes with a lot of risk and baggage. Sure, but, I mean, if I... If my mentality is that Dardox gonna reform, like if you if you think about it in in like the context that I presented, where I think Dardox gonna reform, and I, and I think that like Kabi is super serviceable, and then Broken Blade is like a top side carry that's gonna be um, played through, and and Bjergsen will always be one of the top mids in the league. Like if that if that's what I'm banking on, then this has to be my yeah my, okay. My take that's away. and that's what I was gonna say. That's a big take that's such a like to assume that Dardock's going to be okay the yep. whole split even well, if you, you lose him for a little bit he's going to come back he thinks TSM will do better than Loco thinks TSM will do that should have been your take yeah, yeah. I think TSM will be better than what Loco thinks TSM will be <laughs> they, they asked me for a hot take and they're like ooh too hot of a take tone it down Dom like what the fuck like I don't know what to say <laughs> uh, you can have your takes we're just giving our opinions on your takes uh, okay all right all right, all right. so those are uh Dom's takes there uh, take a look at them all over Johnson, Nick Smithy, Dardock, Zven, and TSM making it to spring finals. All right. Uh, I'm up next. Loco, you close it out. Um, so for me, uh, starting off with the number one take, even though it's pretty clear that Team Liquid is by and far the best team. I don't believe that they're going to be spring champions. I'm just taking the field. I think that, again, you had a tried and true formula with X Smithy there being a glue person. We've always talked about that. Um, and now putting in Broxa gives you more firepower, but it's going to take a lot for everyone to adjust. Uh, for me, I, I think it's, and especially with these Visa issues, they're going to be a slow starter. The big question is, will they be able to catch up at the end? I don't think so. And just given how long uh, of a period of success they've had, it's unprecedented. And I just don't think that they're going to be able to do it. I I think that uh, Broxa coming in is just going to take time for everyone to get used to. Um, It wasn't the cup of tea for everyone. That's why Caps left Fnatic and was like, you know what, let's go to G2 and let's build a crown there, even though we were just at World's Finals. So I think 
I don't think that he's a bad addition. Obviously, I think he's a fantastic addition. I just think it takes a, a little while to see if it fits. And if it doesn't, then they might have some of the same issues that Fnatic had at the very beginning. Hmm. I have a very familiar take, so I'll save my thoughts for my section. Dom? I, I, I think that's a reasonable take. I can see that that, 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 that happens to split. I mean, I, I think that there is a world where Broxley just doesn't click with the team, and uh, they don't win. I still think that they, they will be, like, favorites, though. You know, like, I, like sure, right absolutely, now, absolutely. Like, I, I think they're favorites to, to win the split. I mean, I just, their players are just so fucking good, man. Their players are so good. Jensen, Impact, Double Lift, Core JJ. Like, mm. dude, that's Poe Belter's gonna jungle for that team and win games. Like, come on, that team is so good. <laughs> but it's one thing to be a favorite, and it's another thing to be favorites against the field, which I think TL was. Like, last year, they were favorites against the field. Yeah, yeah. you'd now, still pick them year, against all nine. They're just the favorites. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, yeah. So like last year they were probably like sixty percent chance to win the whole thing going mm-hmm. in, and then this time maybe it's like forty. Yeah. Um. So take number two, hundred thieves. I took a look at the schedule. Although you we just have... take the schedule to get a soft take. I'm like, sure they will. They play what the schedule because I will. It just surprised me when I was looking through it. No, they have a couple of difficult games, but like TL, TSM, Cloud Nine, all three of those teams play each other i think they're going to cannibalize each other i have 100 thieves not that high up on my tier list that we'll get to at the end of the show um so it surprised me to see them being unbeaten up until week four i think that's until week they, four yeah until we they'll four. be eight and zero or I they'll be six and zero. zero i think six they're gonna zero. be six and zero into that week and they'll lose uh their second match i forgot who it was up against but uh, that's what i'm saying see i think it'll be up until week four they're gonna be uh Six and zero. Oh. Going back to our time at Golden Guardians in the summer split, we were in first place into week three, and then we didn't win a game until like week nine. So to me, that <laughs> felt like shit. a yeah, that felt like a hot <laughs> Holy day. It was like shit. week eight or week nine. It was something like that. But God, I remember yeah. they I were can't like, the I don't know what the sun <laughs> looks like. What is the light? I'm blinded. Holy fuck. Yeah, the darkness. Jesus. So to me, that's a pretty hot take. A hundred these being that far up and then falling pretty hard afterwards. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think they're going to be a, an un- unbeaten team that Rioma is going to surprise people and then get figured out. So, mm-hmm. Um, a, the new schedule came out to me too many days, and maybe this is a personal take here with my own experience, but I think that the same thing happens in NFL. Like the whole point of having singular games being a spectacle. We talk about it all the time, right? It wants every game to be special and important. Now we're just kind of sprinkling the broadcasts all across each other. Now the broadcast isn't as important. How are they going to do with, you know, spreading it across? Yes, you're getting a lot of views and it's a lot of hours, but is each game important? Is Monday, you know, the Academy games, are they important? Are the Friday rush, are people going to tune in for that? What's that look like? I think it's cool to start and be interested, but... I think it's just a lot of broadcast days and a lot of. So you mean audience burnout? Out. Yes. Not audience player burnout. Burnout. Audience you mean burnout. Audience burnout. Audience burnout. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, do you think it's a good thing that the audience has this much league at their fingertips? They always have, though. They've always like if you are a true league fan, you can watch LPL, LEC, LCS, like some random ass league. Like I'm sure there's during the year there's always competitive league going on every day if you were like a true fan it just gives NALCS teams like more things to watch and like there's so many shows popping up people are doing way more shoulder content I think people are hungry to talk about LCS to watch more LCS so yeah I think there's a vacuum there's space for content and people are just filling it up so I don't think there will be burnout I don't think there'll be burnout in terms of viewership and things like that I think that for players that there is definitely going to be burnout. I've been talking to some of the players, so I talked to Jensen a lot about it. And the thing about the scrim schedule is, like, let's say you have a game on, so so for a TL, I think in the first week, they have a game on Saturday and Monday, right? So so normally, like, the way it worked would it be, it'd be, like, you scrim Tuesday through Friday, and then you play Saturday and Sunday, and then you have Monday off, and then you do the same thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. But the problem now is, like, if you have a game on Monday, that means that you, like, you don't get, like, a real day off because you scrim, you, you, you play on, on, on Saturday, right? And then you scrim Sunday where, where other teams are in LCS and it's really hard to like find scrim partners a lot of the time because a lot of the teams are playing and then the teams that aren't playing are normally playing on Monday and those are the teams that you're going to fucking play against so you don't want to play against them. So like the scrimming is weird. 
And then if you have another game on Saturday, it feels bad taking the Tuesday off. Like a lot of times you don't get the Tuesday off because you want to be scrimming Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You want those four days of scrims going into Saturday. So there's going to be like less days off for players that have the Monday game sometimes. And I think that that could lead to like player burnout um, over time. I remember there used to be a weird ass schedule where we would play on Fridays also on top of Saturday, Sunday. So LCS used to be a format where we did three days before. And we ran into the same problem where, yeah, it's so awkward having like where you play on Friday and then you play on Sunday. So now the equivalent would be where you play on Saturday and then you play on Monday. Having that middle day off is just so what the fuck. Do you yeah, feel- and it's also just uh, uh, just one last thing is like yeah. it's also just weird because of like the timing of the week. Like more, more normal people have their like their week start on like Monday and then like, you know. It, it, your your week like starts starts in the beginning of the week and it ends oh, at the shit. end of the week right but now with like this new format it's like your days are so fucked up because like you, you're like your your day off potentially would be like a tuesday but your but like your biggest like stressful moment is on monday which is at the beginning of the week it just feels weird to a lot of the players mm. the do you feel like is. it's going to lead to a bigger academy uh scrim I guess, set up? Like, do you feel like teams are going to trust their academy to play in those situations? They're not trusting. They're just being forced to do it. It's- I, I, I hope not, because I feel like that... that I feel like academy practice is actually kind of bad when you're an LCS player. I think it gives you, like, a level of delusion towards, like, how good whatever you're playing is. Because, like, if you execute really well on, or play certain champions against academy, you might have, like, a false perception of how good these picks are against, like, a team that actually knows what they're doing. So unless your academy team is really, really good, which I don't think many of the academy teams are, because yeah, if you're really, really good, why would you play an academy? Like what <laughs> like what what level of practice are you actually getting? Does it actually help you? Mm-hmm. Oh, Daniel, get to your next take. All right. So the next take is coach of the split. Um, we've had three active coaches of the splits right now, currently, I believe in uh, you have Zix, you have uh, Peter, four, and four. you have oh, oh. has uh, Kane not won Coach Kane yet? and Reaper. Mm-hmm. So yeah, oh, so four. Wait. four, yeah, yeah, four. Thong. Oh, Hasn't Thong, Thong won? won. Oh yeah, wait, like everyone's what? This Coach of the Split is such bullshit. Like, Fuck I, you! It's a very prestigious <laughs> award. Fuck, Fuck you. you. <laughs> Coach, a fucking loco one coach of the split, all right? Like, uh, fuck you. We smashed you, Dom. We fucking smashed you. Yeah, okay, oh you, God, smashed, you smashed my team. Salty. You didn't smash me. I was you ahead in every salty. fucking game. No, wait, what? No, Centurion was better. No. Wait, in which games? In which games was he better? What all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What are you right. saying? He is so Dom, you had your oh, opportunity wait, to wait, prove no, it Dom, earlier, okay, no, you know, and no, you didn't no, take Centurion it. was worse. Centurion was so bad. Okay. Centurion was an iron-level player. But his coach carried him. You're actually right. <laughs> Centurion was worse. Centurion was much, much worse. You were actually making my point for me. Or so, maybe you just had Bjergsen on your team, and he literally 1v9'd every game. You had Phoenix, best of your player ever. Never yeah. get skanked. Yeah, and you guess had who Piglet. got it? You had a yeah. world champion. You had world champion. You God. had a special. You, you had the best player. You guys stole him away from us. You had a stack. Oh blocker. my God! See, this is why this is why TL failed because Loco <laughs> believes in Piglet of all people. This is why <laughs> Loco's career ended because he decided to to bank everything on fucking Piglet and Phoenix. Yeah. I, I told Steve, Piglet and Phoenix, these are my best friends. These players never shit talk me. These players this Korean never bias. Talk it's so me. insane. <laughs> <laughs> Korean <laughs> bias is insane these days. Right. Daniel, sorry for the debacle. Yeah. Go back to your point. So what, is, what was your this, point? I, well, I was making a point about how prestigious Coach of the Split was, but now I feel like I can't make it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can make your point. You can make your point. Um, we've had basically the same guys win it over and over again. We made a big push to have Kane win it last year. I think it's pretty clear that Kane has the best roster to work with this year, but I think it's going to be someone creeping up and stepping up to win that one. Uh, to me, it'll be um, Pi- uh, Pi- uh, Irene. Sorry, Irene over Irene? at uh, over at EG. I think EG is mm-hmm. going to surprise some people, even if they don't win the split. I think the fact that they'll pop up and come out of nowhere as a new org, and I think the new org feel also gives a team an opportunity to win because the last new person to win other than Kane was, was probably back over in 100 Thieves and I think it's like kind of that new org kind of feel thing so uh, yeah 
So I think we'll have a new coach of the split, but I don't know how much it's worth now that we heard all these arguments. Uh, and it's then worth last, a lot. I, I hate I, I hate coach of the split. It's literally like, oh, your team won. Oh, you're first in the regular season. Coach of the split, or like your team was supposed to be dog shit, and they they and like your players played well. Okay, coach of the split. How the fuck do you know what the coach of the split is when you don't know what the coach is doing? Like you literally, no one knows what any coach does besides for the people that are on that team, right? Like you never know like how much. Of course, the, it's not like the coach sits there and like conducts every draft perfectly themselves. Like the players just say what they want to fucking play, and then the coach tries to make a team comp out of what their players want to play. Like it's not, it's not like you have insight into what each coach is doing, like where every player's like baseline was and how much they were able to elevate them, what they're able to do in the team environment to make the team succeed. Like you don't know any of that shit. So it's like a fucking worthless award. It's like you don't see any coaching, and then you're supposed to give an award to, to one of these coaches. It's so arbitrary, it's so random. How do I agree with Dom without shitting on my own coach at the split award? <laughs> Let's just move on. Let's go to number five. I guess to close out on that, I wish that coaches were weighted more. The coaches would be able to vote, I think, because they talk a lot. Coaches definitely talk to each other all the time about problems that they've had, about things that they've No, we just shit talk players over alcohol. That's what we do. We don't yep. really talk about that what goes on the what thing. That, that, is, that was basically what I was saying. I was trying to keep Korea town out of episode one. <laughs> I, I literally remember just... It's too late. I remember, I remember hearing Peter just fucking talk to local... <laughs> Especially so bad. Miss four Timbers in one game. Four Timbers. How oh, you missed last four Timbers? Four flash timbers, one game. Right, just over and over again. Like, I fucking heard that. Leave shit. my man Alex alone. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, and the last take here, uh, it pains me to say, and I think it's a hot take here as well. I think Golden Guardians won't finish last. I'm not the biggest fan of GGS, but uh, I believe in uh, Golden Glue holding his own for a little bit. And mostly, I believe. <laughs> And yeah, I mostly I believe in uh, closer coming on in and changing things up here. We saw oh how God. we saw how we saw how uh, BB came on in and worked well for uh, TSM and really changed it. Closer was the best player out of TCL, like the best. It wasn't there is no contest. Did some research asked around with people. And it was like, no, this guy really changes the whole region. I just, think coming just, in just... when you have a player like that. It gives you a fighting chance, and I think Golden Guardian is Golden Guardian still paying for your money. insurance or something. What the fuck is this take? What? <laughs> no, I mean, like, I just want you to know that that even if you're the best Turkish transfer, you're still a Turkish transfer. Like that 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 is what it is at the end of the day. <laughs> I, I will say, Cats played in Turkish league, so there are a few exceptions. But Closer was like, <sighs> I, I don't know that much about Closer, but I do agree with Dom. You're a big fish in a very small pond. I mean, I I think like we've we've seen good people from TCI. Mean, obviously, Broken Blade is the premier one from uh, yeah from from Turkey to transfer over recently to to NA. I think closer isn't bad. I just feel like this team is just going to be a bunch of people that are like good individually. I don't think that there's anyone who's like a proven shot caller is going to be like able to lead the team. When you look at like other teams, it's like every other team has someone who I feel like knows how to win. Like like actual matches, how to win close matches. I just feel like all those these players are like. Just for like, I guess besides for Hanser, <laughs> Hanser was always quiet on TSM. He was never like a major voice on TSM. I feel like these these are, players are just kind of like used to losing. You know, like Keith is just used to losing in LCS. Golden Glue is used to losing. Like some players just lose so much that they, they don't even know how to win anymore. They can perform well, but they can't win. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, dude. GGS. As Dom said, they don't have a win condition and they have so many things going on. Like they're trying Golden Glue, they're trying Key Support, they have FBI and Closer. None of these guys are really proven. The only solid thing they have is Haunter. And by the end of the season, Haunter is going to be going crazy. So I mean, maybe Immortals finishes last. Maybe Immortals just really, really fucking sucks. Like they, they suck so incredibly hard that no one could have even expected them sucking that hard. I could see that happening and they could, and like Golden Guardians could not finish last. But I don't think it'll be because it will be because like Golden Guardians is playing well. I think it'll be because like Immortals is literally like one in seventeen or like two in sixteen or something like that. Mm. Well, uh, to me, the antithesis of that for at least Immortals, we're getting off the rails just a bit, is that Smithy's so used to winning. I don't think that you know all of a sudden he just starts figuring out. A he's also used culture. to playing with fucking good players. Like that's <laughs> that's the big issue. It's like he's used to like having just like it's really easy to win when all your lanes are fucking smashing. Uh, he had 
that Immortals roster where they were not in playoffs even without X Minty. I think it was yeah. Pobelter, Cody, Ole, and Flame. And then he brought that one all the way to finals. Yeah, I know but- Thong came in also, mm-hmm. but Xmithy has played with not the best talent before and delivered better results. But, than but the expected. thing is, like, if, if you go back and you watch that split, like those players improved massively in terms of like their individual laning. Like Pobelter was like a monster at that point. Ole and Cody Sun literally won Bali in every single game, like early game, and Flame was was super super solid top. Like all of his lanes were performing well at that point. X- Wait, can't I make the point that Xmithy makes his lanes look better? Like, it's a lot easier to play with Xmithy than any other jungler due to the information sure. he's giving, how he's communicating, how he's mm-hmm. very flexible in pathing. Yeah, I, I think that, that that that's definitely, like, that could be relevant. But I also think that, like, at that point, like, Ole had a pretty bad, like, early split. And, like, Ole was in, in uh, contention from for MVP that split. He was, like, yeah, rank he was. one in solo queue. He was, he was mm-hmm. actually just, like, was straight up. Yeah, he was he was the runner up. He got second. I, I don't know who won it. Did Bjergsen Bjerg- won it again? Won. Yeah. Okay. So Bjergsen won it, and then Ole Ole was second in the votes. Like he, he was doing really fucking well. Like his Morgana, his Thresh, he, he was like the prodigy at that point. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that that Xmithy is definitely good, and maybe he's able to like save this team. I just like from what I've heard, like Altex pretty quiet, right? Hakuho is mm-hmm. pretty fucking quiet. I don't know anything about Ika. I just don't imagine somebody that hasn't been good enough to make an, an LEC team in like three years. I don't imagine that he is like the fucking god of mid lane. It's like he's been around for too long for me to believe that he's suddenly improved to that degree. And I just don't know how much Soaz would care because, you know, like... They just have to be better than Golden Guardians. That's all they have to do <laughs> to, for Daniel take not to be true. I think that's pretty yeah. easy. I'm taking the field again. I have two field picks here with someone's going to beat TL, GGS is going to beat somebody. Uh, <laughs> those are my takes for the 2020 season. We'll check back on into them uh, as the season progresses. Loco, you're up next. Surprisingly, <laughs> at the top. I started with uh, the same one at the top because, uh, you know, we had two different points there. So at the top... Loco, take it away. So, <clears throat> my number one, Teal will not be spring champions. I think championship fatigue is a real thing. When you're winning all the time, like, dude, you feel like you're on top of the world. And it doesn't feel special anymore. Someone, a lot of people talk about it, like, getting that first championship, you're so thirsty, you're so hungry, like, you're pouring your soul, you're pouring everything into it. But once you have four in a row, it does not feel the same. And for players like Doublelift, players like Jensen, do you think they give a fuck about regular season games? Like, do you think they're grinding out those solo queue games? I could be spending time with Lina, or I could play NA solo queue. I think that's a pretty easy decision. Like, <laughs> Jesus, for, that's the point? <laughs> Holy fuck. I, I think they're going to be... I think this season... I mean, I get it. Lina's hot, but, like, I, I don't know if that if that takes away from your motivation to be a champion. Like, Jesus Christ. What the hell? How thirsty are you, Loco? That's, that's Loco's motivation. That's what he's thinking what? about when he's a coach. He's like, he's like, I could be, like, drafting a team where I could be having sex with Lina. Like, fuck. Like, what? Oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. That's you just, insane, dude. You took my point and you fucking twisted it. You took my worst. I don't know. I don't know about that one. It fucking worked, didn't it? I don't know about that one, Chief. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what the what is wrong with you oh my god uh, anyways to go back into it tl everyone like always probably believes they can turn it on anytime too like we're doing bad in the regular season like i'm jensen i'm i'm core jj i'm double lift i'm impact like we can turn it on anytime we need to so i think this team is not gonna get their there, I don't think maybe they get one this year, but I definitely don't think they get two. And I think the one they miss will be from spring. I mean, I think that there's there there is going to be like a level of, of like desire on that team. Oh. No, no, I think there's going to be complacency. Like I could see that from like the people that are the four time champions because there's only at this point there's only two four time champions, right? It's mm-hmm. double lifted impact. Um, I think that like Brox is probably going to be motivated to like because th- that that's still on the line, right? Being the first player to ever win both NA and EU, I feel mm-hmm. like that's a huge motivator. I think Brox is going to be super super motivated. I've been seeing how much he's been playing. He's been like spamming the fuck out of Soul Key. Like it's obvious that he really really wants to be. Good. He doesn't scrim. He doesn't have scrim, so that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there's other players that 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 aren't scrimming that like, that when they're not scrimming they aren't doing shit. And I'm talking about like before the period of scrims really starting. Scrims didn't start until like recently for for mm-hmm. LCS teams like. People, like, you think X Smithy was playing this much solo queue as much as Broxa was? He was uh, playing video games. I'll say that. Okay, sure, <laughs> sure, exactly. That's you, that's my you point right there. But he was playing video games. Okay, so Broxa was fucking grinding out here, like because the Fnatic thing, like I don't know how much of this is out, but like he did not want to leave Fnatic. Like it was a, it was like he got kicked. 
from Fnatic. That is that is the situation. So he is Ooh. he is he wants to prove that he is one of the fucking best players. And then also like Jensen, Jensen won 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 two titles now, but like he he wants to prove that like he's the reason why they're winning titles, not like oh he's just winning titles because he's on TL. So I feel like there's still going to be desire on that on that team. Okay. I think there will be desire, but not as much. I think the push for the four was really big. And I think this year, the yeah. field is much stronger too. So I feel really good about saying TL won't be champions. But Team Liquid, thank you so much for the merch. Reflective looks really good. Keep sending it. <laughs> but I don't think you guys will be champions. What is I mean, they got to let someone else have a chance at this this point. Like, I mean, fucking, what was the last time we had four-time champions in LCS? Oh, never. I don't think, we, we've also never had four in a row. Four in a row is really special. Yeah, four in a row is crazy. Can you imagine for two years you go to every finals and you win every finals? Holy fuck, you must be on top of the world. Oh, Dom hasn't even been to one finals. Never mind, Dom. You're gonna have to match. You're gonna have to dream a lot for that one. <laughs> yeah, it's because I actually had the skill to continue as a player and I didn't have to just go the coaching route. Wow. Even when I was a player, I at least won an OG and invitational and I made finals uh, on my first tournament. Uh, okay. I mean I made I made finals of, of regionals too. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I also made made worlds. Have you ever uh, have you ever qualified for worlds as a player? I've gotten out of <laughs> groups. I, I've gotten out of groups at worlds. Have oh, you ever as done a that? coach, as a coach, you got out of groups. Wow, with Bjergsen on your team, dude. It's crazy how Bjergsen carried your whole career. You didn't even make it through two weeks being a coach for a bottom tier team. This oh, is true. That's how bad you were. I just, I just did not want to work for a vegan. You know, Dom, I'll, I'll right. say Until this. I saved your career. Until I recently <laughs> saved your career and got you some viewership on your channel, you were literally dead as fuck on Twitch. You were dead on Wait. Twitter. You were dead on everything. So no, nah, my, Twitter, really my Twitter is fine. My YouTube was fine. And I'll it thank Dor- not fine. I'll thank Doran for fine. saving my career. But I do pass the torch off to you. Okay. Right. Okay, you, your Twitter was fine while you've been consistently losing followers for three years now. You have not went up in followers in three years. I'll actually admit, I did. I have been losing followers, but how the fuck do you know that? Like, how the f- are you keeping a tab because, on my no, stalking, I keep stalking, on, dude? You, well, see, what happens is, is you 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 tweet things out and you tag mm. me, and then I look at your Twitter, and every single time I see the number lower, so that's how I know. Damn. <laughs> yep, that one hurt. All right, let me go to my number two. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dardock doesn't end on TSM. I actually agree with Dom and his take regarding Dardock won't be a ward, but because Dardock won't be a ward and he'll keep his opinion really strong, I think it's going to be hard for this team to really function. I, when it gets really hard, that's where I f- feel like TSM is going to have problems. When things are when they're winning, when things are going good, like I heard Broken Blade and Dardock are really close. I, we're hearing so many good things. But when it gets hard, we've seen the same pattern over and over again, not just from Dardock, but from TSM also. Six different teams for Dardock, nine different teams or nine different junglers for TSM. Just statistically, this is not a good bet to play. So, yeah, I don't think Dardock ends up on TSM Spring. Um, That's or, delusion right there. You think he's not making it through Spring? I think there's- he's he's either going to get benched. Or there's going to be significant and, problems. And there's precedence for it. Remember, CLG traded for Crazy. him, and that same season traded him away. Like, it's happened before in his career. Yeah, I don't think that's happening on TSM. I think I think that, like, in spring, they're letting them play the whole fucking spring split either way. I mean, Acadian made it through a whole, a whole split on spring when he wasn't even supposed to be the starter. I feel like once things are clicking, if things are doing well, especially, like, given, like, how the team environment is, I don't think they lose faith that fast unless something major happens. And, I, and like, obviously, if my take is that he's going to be one of the best jugglers in the league, I don't think something major is going to happen. So Okay, on the reverse, let's think a little bit. What if there are problems? Do you think there's enough like problem solving within the team? Do you think there's enough maturity within the players? Do you think there isn't baggage from before where they're like, oh, it's Dardock again. Oh, Broken Blade was also bad last split. I think the deck is stacked against TSM. I don't think I don't think people think that Broken Blade was stacked was bad last split. I don't think that it's stacked against TSM. Like yeah. Bro- Broken Blade, Broken Blade, I think was a product of the environment being garbage. He's playing with three different junglers within one split. His bot lane is perma fucking crying while getting resources and getting shit on. Like mm-hmm. Bjergsen obviously fell off towards the end of the split. Like I feel like Broken Blade was was the person that they have the most confidence, and that's why he's the only returning member alongside with Bjergsen. Wait, Adam, yeah, you must have known how offseason went. Broken Blade was not a for sure player. There was definitely other options that were floated around. They yeah, didn't dun, have dun. 100% confidence. Leaks. For sure. me, though, I, I agree that Dardock's not going to be there, but not because of Broken Blade. I agree with Dom. I just think Dardock has a history of it, you know? Of well, th- 
The, the, the other thing is, like, Peter's also a very jungle-focused coach. I feel like the reason why Darnick has struggled is, is people didn't want to give him, like, the fucking reins on these other teams. Like, it was always like a, oh, we got to, like, have you accommodate the lanes. But the way Peter coaches is he's always been super, super jungle-focused. Like, most players look better under Peter than they look, like, when they're when they're under anyone else, you know? So there, are, there's been six teams that worked with Stardock. I think at least in one of those teams, someone must have been like, yo, Stardock, you take control. Let's do what you want. Like he's definitely been given control before. And I think a team that's really representative of that is Immortals. In Immortals, like Dardock was their premier player. They signed Dardock for like four years. Like Flame was always complaining to me about we're doing what Josh wants, like, but I don't think this is correct. Like he's been given the reins before. I don't think that's like a new thing that Peter's gonna bring. Yeah, but I think it's it's always been like half hearted. Like it, it's not like a oh Dardock is like our player, and then the coach is like like I don't. So I guess I guess I'll rephrase my point. I don't really think it's so much about Dardock give, being given the reins. I just want the 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 coach should still have the reins. I want Dardock to be like the focus of the team in the early game, like always. Like I want people to be doing what's good for Dardock, and I think that that uh, the way that Peter coaches is he's very concentrated on jungle pathing. He understands what's good for a jungler, what's bad for a jungler, how experience works, like what is going to like what it means for a jungler to actually be ahead in the game, how they can take over the game from that point. So I think that having a jungle focused coach with a strong jungler like Dardock is really, really good. Um yeah, I mean I hate to bet against TSM, but and I hate to bet against Dardock and I hate to bet against Peter. You love to bet against Dardock. What are you I, talking about? Yeah. Whoa, oh my <laughs> fucking god. I like I genuinely want Josh to do well, but as mm-hmm. an analyst, this is my take. Like just yeah. six different teams, Same. nine different junglers. Like that's yeah. my take. Yeah, what I, is I, this? I, genu- I genuinely want Piglet to do well. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. I re- that's, I re- that's actually I really hope that he different. does. No, I really hope he does. Shit with Piglet well. is different from my relationship with Dardot. Oh my god, go fuck yourself. What uh, what? It's literally just fake as fuck, the same as your relationship. We always tend to oh like each other, god. but then you oh actually god. don't. Like, I, I, no, me and Dardock actually spend time outside, though. Have you actually spent time outside with Piglet? Yeah, sure, and we're fine when we spend time outside. But then when oh. we spend time, like, but then when you actually have to work together, and it's like, oh, what do you, like, do you respect the other person? Like, I, I just don't, I just don't buy that shit. All right. My what question is, what? I, wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. Your first two takes are getting rid of TL and get rid of TSM. Who are mm-hmm. you? What happened? Do you not like their uh, merch? I, I, Those I, merch lines just came out? What I've happened? Never, I've never been pro-TL. Okay. Like that's never been a thing yeah. where I think TL is always good, but if I had a choice, I haven't been pro TL. So, so, so your take is you think C9 is probably going to win the split. I think uh, I, like who's going to no, win no. the split if it's not these two. I think C9 CLG will be good. I still CLG. think TL is the favorite, but they're at 40% where before like TL, we would talk about TL as favorites against the field. I yeah. still can. I still think TL can win. I still think TSM can win, but it's just not like, TL's going to win. Who's going to get second? I don't think it's that year. All right. <clears throat> On my third take, I think there will be more Academy players ever in LCS. I think Spring Split just doesn't matter as much. So teams will experiment more. And there's a huge problem in Academy of teams like Dignitas, which are just starting five LCS players. So the level of Academy is forcefully going up by veteran players playing in Academy. And with Academy broadcast being way more part of LCS broadcast now, it's going to feel a lot more similar. People are going to get to see these players more. So I think if benching, I think there will be more benching due to spring not mattering as much and academy players will be higher level and just more incorporated. So yeah, we're going to see a lot of academy players for LCS teams. Yeah. I, I like this one because there are so many imports this season, especially a, a ton of Australians that came over. We already covered closer um, and that's going to allow a lot more experimentation. You don't bring these players over without wanting to see. And now with the risk of championship points removed from the spring into summer, as Loco said, I think there's a lot more there. There's a lot of uh, Australian talent, uh, I think, that will be either well, exposed either for good or for bad we figure out what fbi is and like is he just a guy that auto attacks a lot and plays well on kaisa and that's it you get to see rioma um over there who's already starting but then that might mean visa issues or you just say hey look you're not ready yet let's put in saligo we know what we're getting there there are opportunities for players to come on up Mm. rookie of the split fake god as well what a (laughs) ridiculous (laughs) award uh yeah no that 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 award is is, is so dead to me i, I don't think saligo plays a game in lcs like oh damn actually one of my takes should have been johnson wins rookie of the split that would have been a great take but 
Anyways, yeah. What do you think of more academy players in LCS, Dom? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, maybe because it doesn't matter as much, we will see more academy players in LCS. I mean, there's the thing that that I would have to like really look at is just like how the import versus um versus like uh and a players works on all those teams because it's like sure even if you wanted to like give phoenix some starting time as ad that means you have to bench like you have to bench either huni or Froggen for it so then it's oh, like no. phoenix i think phoenix gets naturalized this split okay so so wait this split or after the split so he he got fucked in the echo fox here so he it got delayed one year so it should be this split it this. should be like he's he's starting he's starting to be he can be considered NA. So right now is he NA? He is NA. Yeah. Residency okay. says NA. And yeah, also he has to be NA because you can't do double import in Academy, and I'm sure Ole's import. Uh okay, yeah. So 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 maybe maybe for that one it's fine. So this is what I'm saying. Like I need I would need to look at like how many imports would be on every team. Cause I, I guess like I guess Brots are for Strain Fire would work, right? Like that would be like some something that mm -hmm. I could see happening. But like there's a lot of situations where like there's you just need to bench too many of your premier players to in order to get like playtime. It's like, let's say you want to have um, like an academy mid laner. Like, let's say you want an academy player to play for for EG or something. It's right. It's like, okay, well then we need to like bench Bang for fucking Deathly just to get like a, a hey now, a mid -laner hey now. Play. I mean, I don't know. I, I just I, I think that for me, I just don't even care about that like at, at all. Like, if academy players play or not. Okay, so my first take is I think EG will miss playoffs. I think there's so many players on EG that are just getting such an easy pass, like Zazel, Bang. Like, Bang wasn't all the problem last year. There's definitely problems with Afro, but there's so much blame on Afro. Like, spam this fire to make Afro retire. Like, Afro should have never won um, MVP that year. Like, it's just so much on Afro and so little on Bang because he's from SKT. And also, C9 didn't just replace Sneaky. Rest of C9 didn't say, I don't want to play with Sneaky. They said, I don't want to play with this bot lane. There's blame on Zazel too. Like he's really great on champions like All-Star, champions like Yalio, where he's engaging, where he's playing these tanky stuff. You, We've seen him on Lux. We've also seen him on Tom Kench. Zazel definitely has his weaknesses too. And I think Sneak, or not Sneaky, Bang plus Zazel is going to bring out the worst in each other. So I don't like that duo. And also Kumo, he had... Average 0 0.4 CS lead at 15 minute. He's always playing carries. He always has better teammates than C9 Academy or C9 main team. And he always get he's always getting jungle attention. And that's the kind of CS lead you're giving me. His laning is not great either. I think Spence Garen is the only player on Evil Genius where there isn't like a black mark on him. Like Spence Garen is, I think, by far still going to be one of the best junglers. If not the best, at least number two. And Jizuke, his season was injury ridden. And there was a lot of problems on Vitality. So I think it's really hard to point a finger and be like, Zizuke is going to be bad. But if Zizuke isn't solid, if he's not a top tier mid lane, rest of the side lanes are going to fall around EG. So I actually don't, I'm not that high on EG. I don't think they'll be that great. I think they'll make playoffs. I think they'll be like, I would, I have much more confidence in EG making playoffs than I do in like a team like potentially Dignitas making it like 100 thieves it's like yeah dignitas 100 thieves yeah 100 thieves dignitas are like the two so i think i think 100 thieves will make playoffs i think dignitas will so i guess this leads into our uh gear list yeah mm -hmm. i think it, it's funny that you say more academy players than ever will make it to the lcs and then kumo who is like the product of academy the first overall pick ever is you're like mm, i don't know i think we've seen kumo he's propped well up and he's developed mm, i guess we'll find out I, I don't think so and he does have both Sven and Zazel there uh, right. to to support his growth as a top laner. I mean, I feel I feel like when you have support and jungle synergy, I feel like that's a really important thing um, in LCS. And I feel like having like support and jungle synergy that is done well over years should give you enough power to get to make it into LCS. I'd have more much more confidence in them being able to click and perform well than like play like I don't know like when you look at Dignitas. Froggen's like missed a lot of playoffs, right? He's like pretty okay with missing playoffs. Like it seems like that's just something that can happen to somebody like Froggen. Are Greg and Afro going to be at the same level support and jungle synergy wise? Are they going to be as good as, as a jungle support duo as fucking um, Zazel and Svenskeren? I don't think so. Like, so I, I feel like that's 
like having that core leadership on your team, like having the the people agree because a lot of your map plays and your macro comes from like what your support and jungle want to do. It's like they're the ones with the CC. They're normally the ones that can start fights really easy. The fucking AD just marches around, does whatever you fucking tell them to. And then those <laughs> are the people that like decide like, hey, we're going to start this dragon. We're going to play for this next, like all that stuff. And I feel like just having two people on the same page um, and especially people that have consistently won, like they have that correct framework for how to win the game um, in LCS. I don't disagree with your point, but to do all that, you need to build a lead and you need to make sure you have priority early. And I think there's a world where Bang and Zazel actually do bring out the worst in each other and they have a really inactive bot lane that's always getting pushed in, that's not really taking risks. And Kumo gets exposed as a top laner and then they are always having two losing side lanes. I think that's the worst case for EG. And if that does happen, which I don't think is not that unlikely, they miss playoffs. All right, well, push us towards your last one there. Okay, Korean so bias. We always had to have some Korean <laughs> bias. We had TL in there. We had TSM in there. Now let's close it out with uh, some Korean bias. <laughs> it, this kind of goes with my take one and take two, where I don't think TL will be spring champions. I don't think I don't think Crown will. I don't. At the end of the year, I'm not going to say if I was a GM for a team, I'm not going to say I want Crown over Bjergsen or Jensen. But I think for this spring split specifically, Crown will be the best mid. I think CLG, I like the CLG roster overall. <laughs> um, sorry, though, even if even the even if Ruin did enter your game, I think he'll be better. He had problems last year, and he's getting more used to the scrims. He's getting more used to NA, so I think he'll be better. I'm in love with Wiggly. I'm in love with Crown. I've always liked Smoothie. I've always liked Stixay. So overall, their roster is going to be good. TL and TSM are going to run into problems. I think Bjerg is going to have problems with Stardock at the end of the split. I think TL is going to have problems with the jungler swap out and with um, championship fatigue. They just won't put in the same kind of work. So the lone team that rises to the top for me is CLG. And I think, yeah, Crown is going to be the best mid. Well, I, my, my take is I, like, I think that, like, I never, I don't think Crown is competitive and is like terrible, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think I have, I had him as like the seventh best top laner last split. I feel like he's just always going to be ruin, like, mediocre. Ruin. Or, yeah, ruin, ruin, ruin um, for CLG. So I think Crown's uh, top laner like is just going to be bad, generally speaking. Like ruin, ruin. I can't see a world where he's better than Broken Blade. I can't see a world where he's better than Impact. I can't see a world where he's better than Licorice. Like I, I don't, I don't think he's going to be better than Someday. I don't think that he's he's going to be better than Huni. It's like that's six right there, right? Or mm -hmm. that's five right there. I don't even know how many I need. But like it's like you're already moved past the top five, and it's like if your top laner is that bad, if you're if you're like sure your jungler i feel like wiggly's like okay i feel like he's serviceable i don't think he's on the same tier as like sven and dardock blabber so there i see i see like a whole like i just don't think that you can even be considered one of the best mids if your team is not top three and mm -hmm. i just don't think the team will be top three all right i'm a little higher on ruin and wiggly than you are but yeah that's my take i think crown will be the best mid all right, so those Dude, are. I think, you're, I, I think I think the person that we didn't mention that you're sleeping on is fucking Niski. Oh, I mean, Niski, how do you... Niski in NA was beasting. Like obviously, Niski he looked like... had Sven Skarin. Niski had MVP Sven Skarin. Yeah, but he was also just like a beast. Like it, it, like regardless of the fact that his his jungler was really good, like he was really good himself. Like he was making a lot of plays himself. Like his Kiana, his Aurelia, his Silas were all super good. So I think Niski's champion pool lined up perfectly with Sven Skarin and also the meta. Whenever you play these melee carries like Irelia, Silas, um, what's the other one you mentioned? Kiana. Yeah, Kiana. You're able to set up for ganks really, really well because you're always getting pushed in. And having that good synergy with your jungle and having that good 2v2 will propel you so much forward. Just, yeah, having a strong, having a strong, extreme strong priority in mid and jungle is such an easy thing to play around. So I think last split, Nifki was very good, but I think it was a combination of other factors than just Nifki being good. I think he's individually good. My take. Hmm. All right, Daniel, any final thoughts? Uh, final thought here is that I think there are too many other mid laners to have Crown be like the best one. Like that's that's what I think. Another field bet here. Like I would I would take Niski and I would take Bjergsen, but I wouldn't take Crown over those two. I would take Jensen over him too. And Jensen as well. I can't believe I forgot Jensen there. Uh, I think Jensen and Bjerg are going to be the really two big ones to beat. And if TL and TSM do have the problems, then yeah, Crown's the best mid. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are our hot takes for 2020, just kicking things off. Well, uh, if you guys have thoughts on it, let us know your thoughts in on Twitter or in the chat. 
and we'll uh, take a look at them as the season progresses. The last thing that we asked all five guys to do are talk about three players that are on the hot seat. They had a down season, or maybe they've been around for a long time. I've got all three players here ready to go. I'm filling in the text right now, though, because I forgot to uh, cover that one there. So I'll just put it up on the screen. Loco, why don't we talk about your player first that you think is on the hot seat? He has been around for a while. He's made a change here, and you think this is his last chance. So... Oh, talking about hot seat, right? Mm-hmm. For me, mine's going to be Keith. I don't see Keith finishing for spring. And if Keith does finish, then it says a lot about the current support pool. And it, it just is not a good optic. I think Golden Guardians took a bet on Keith because they weren't happy with the support prospects that were there. And yeah, it's just... I, to be a good support, you need game knowledge. You need leadership. You need to be able to vote be vocal and you need to be able to push people around and move people around your the map and Keith doesn't have that like Keith's thing has always been I have good fingers and I'm easy to work with and those aren't qualities that makes a good support and you don't think that he's going to be able to make the change at all here he's not going to be able to uh... I, he can make the change but I don't think I think Keith's feet is hot I think they are going to be a lot of eyes on Keith with academy players doing well the first position Golden Guardians is going to look at is well, this experiment for Keith being our support isn't going to be working out. Yeah, I, I think I think that, that that's definitely one of the the players that has to be looked at. I mean, it's the most obvious one because he is like role swapping, and he's had such like a poor LCS career to this point that it feels like if things start going bad, people are going to lose faith really quick. Um, my my pick was personally Hakuho. I think that Hakuho is like his performance in like 2018 spring um, playoffs where he like hit a bunch of hooks on Thresh, I think that that kind of like kept him overrated or kept him like rated a lot higher than I think he deserved to be for, for a while now. Um, from what I've heard, he's doesn't communicate well at all um, as a player, which I think is a huge problem as a support. Like pretty much his communication is limited to like, Hey, I'm looking here. Oh, I'm going to try to like hit this here. Like he just pretty much is able to call his engages. But in terms of like, what's going to make a team really good. I feel like you need a support that is able to um, decide what your team is going to play for control vision in terms of like team vision. Like, Hey, I want to ward in this way. Like let's move our vision from this side of the map to this side of the map. We're going to do it like pinks here. We're going to deep ward here. Walk in with me. All that stuff I feel like is really lacking with him. And I think that he hasn't, he's been in the LCS for a while and I haven't seen him really improve on that front. He seems like he's always just been kind of like a skill shot player where he's, He's good mechanically in lane. He hits a lot of like his spells, but in terms of like actually leading the team and um, being able to like you know run a game himself, I don't think that that's his strength. And I think that that like because his team is also going to be so bad, I think that this is going to be like a big issue for him. Why do you think Golden Guardians made that change? Then they had Ole, they had Huhi, they still have Huhi there behind them, but then they and they had a whole roster pool. They had a. Uh, um, scouting ground to pick somebody up. There are free agents available, and they switched with Keith. Like, what is the thought process behind that? This team has made the best decision, so I'm not going to try to logic it out. But also, I think a big part of it is not believing in the solo queue talent or the academy talent or whatever talent that's available and thinking, like, we're not in love with anyone, so why don't we go with someone that we already know, we already think has a good mindset, and we already think is going to be strong mechanically? I think it's I think it's based off potential. It's like, hey, we know what like other, these other people like play support. We know what that looks like. Keith can probably like if he if everything works out like since his mechanics are better and because he like plays laning phase really well like that's been Keith's strength recently. Even in the games that he played for uh, Cloud Nine, like when he got stage games, he's just like shitting on bot lane. If laning phase is his strength and his problem is that he gets caught out caught out late game, I feel like support is the perfect role for that because supports just get caught out late game anyway. <laughs> That's like part of the fucking role. And then like being able to build an advantage for FBI is good. And I think this is something that probably uh, FBI like wanted himself. I think this is something that FBI probably had to be on board with. Mm-hmm. Um, and they probably have like mutual respect. They both probably think each other is like good and underrated, etc. I'm pretty surprised by your Hakuo pick because like Hakuo was like a player that a lot of teams wanted and like kind of fought for. Yeah. I, I think, I think Kukuho is like, it, yeah, it's, it's exactly what I said. I just think that he's been like kind of riding that like hype from the clutch gaming thresh hook yeah, against TSM. Thresh 
Yeah. Yep. I think that that's just been like, like people were, were like, oh, he's really good then. And then over time, it's like, wait, he's just not getting better. It's uh, like, he, isn't he still going to be like seventh or eighth worst support? Yeah. Like, where I feel like Keith will be by far the worst support. Yeah. I mean, Keith should be the worst, but you'd already picked Keith when I went out in for this. I think that he'll be the second worst support. So, Hakuho is the lowest rated support that we have that is still that, that we rated based off of our support tier list. Um, from last season that still has their starting spot. So Hakuho mm-hmm. is still there. But for me, when I thought about it, I was like, Hakuho's always been kind of like that glue guy. But now that I heard the way that you talk about Xmithy, I'm like, oh, well, Hakuho and Xmithy kind of sound like they fit the same role. And now they're on the same team. It'll be interesting to see how they do there. Mm-hmm. What um, about your Viper take? Yeah, so for me, FlyQuest made some quiet changes. They made some quiet changes. And as much as... You know, you're giving Keith an opportunity on potential. Like, that's what the Viper change was. It was potential. He's a great top laner. It allows our team to put our imports somewhere else if we need to. Now, he is the lowest rated player that we have that currently has a spot across all all spots. There's no lower rated player on our tier list that we have that is still starting for a team. And when you have Santorn there, you have an upgrade at mid, the pressure is mounting, you have Ignar coming on in. That's a lot of proven success. To me, FlyQuest's uh, playoffs aspirations are based off of how Viper does, if he's able to grow. Because he had a good start, very much the inverse of Broken Blade. He had a good start and then fell off as the season went on and really couldn't figure out how to play other than ribbon and some carries and him learning how to play tanks and adjust with this new team composition i think is paramount to fly quest and they they can make the change here in spring in summer especially given the format we already covered it it really doesn't lead to anything towards worlds if you're if your goal is worlds not necessarily playoffs then you look towards the top lane and make a change there I'm kind of surprised because I remember Viper doing so well and like yeah, I think I thought it was like top four spring split. Yeah, like Viper was sometimes one of the only reasons, along with Centaurian, why FlyQuest was even staying afloat. And then the player behind them is Revenge, and I think Revenge is really, really fresh. So I don't think Viper's seat would be that hot. I think the hottest seat on FlyQuest is Wild Turtle's seat, actually, um, because I think he played so poorly in last split. Um, I think that that his uh, performance is really bad, and I feel like if he's the person that's getting caught and losing the game, them games still. At this point, they're going to be willing to like change the AD because they have supposedly a really good support, right? Ignar obviously didn't have the greatest uh, season with Shaoka, but he had a good enough one. Like He still looks like he's he's solid, at least in lane phase. Um, so if Ignar is able to get an advantage ball lane, if Santor and Ignar are able to get Turtle ahead and he's not able to carry these games, I can see him getting subbed pretty quick. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that, and that's what I thought at first. I actually looked at Turtle stats first, and to me, that felt more of a, hey, look, Pobe is just dying a lot, and he has a, he has the most damage tear on his team, but it's because he has the largest death percentage out of, I think, any starting uh, player in the LCS. So Turtle was never really put in a position to pop off. That's what I thought. Whereas I remember, again, I'm looking at the list right here, I can pull it up in a second. Uh, our votes here for uh, top lane. I'll switch it on over. We have Viper there at the bottom. Like Viper is down there at the bottom, seventh, seventh, or eighth, eighth, seventh, eighth. When Zyrene did it as well. So as Rip much Zyrene. as yeah, Rib Zyrene. As much as uh, Viper had some big plays, he also was constantly just getting crushed. So might be Rip Viper. Later on in the season, I don't think it's as much turtle as it is. Uh, I just felt like he was like I felt like he was. I mean, honestly, if I looked at like last um, last split, right? Like JJ, obviously in the beginning was just the worst player on the team. He got kicked, mm-hmm. um, and then after that, I considered like Pobolt had a pretty bad split, and I, I'd say t- Turtle had a really bad split as well. So like I considered Santorin and Viper the best two parts of that team. Mm. All right. I, I agree. I, I my big thing is also Revenge is nowhere near ready, and FlyQuest. They haven't been very much a kick player fast team. They've been like, let's ride this out. Let's see how things go kind of team. It's like JJ has been inting for seven weeks straight. All right, let's see if he can do it for eight. Like, I don't know. It's fucking, it's, it's, it's sad seeing teams like that that aren't willing to um, make changes, but it's just, it kind of gives me like an idea of how the organization perceives themselves. Like 
they're just happy to do like kind of well. Like if this team starts making playoffs and shit, good enough. This is not a team that's set up to win. Like they don't need to, they are not trying to win a championship. They just want to not suck. All right. All right. Fair enough. So those are our takes for players that need to step up. Otherwise, they might be on the outside looking in. So lastly, so we went through hot takes. We went through format, schedule, Broxa. Now it's time for the part where we'll probably hear the most from you guys at home. It's our tier list. We're going with our LCS tier list on teams that we think are going to do the best um, this season. I'm trying to get a box to cover up. Some of the stuff here. All right, there we go. Loka, your face is kind of covered a little bit, but I'll fix it later. Um, all right, so we're going to reveal our bottom six, our bottom four teams first, the non-playoff teams first, and then afterwards we'll reveal uh, our playoff teams. So here we go. Loco, you can speak to it first. You're the only person that has EG not making it in. You have EG, FlyQuest. We all have Immortals there at ninth, and then we disagree a little bit with uh, Golden well, Guardians. Yep, they get and a 10. Okay. I mean, I can talk about my 10, 9, 8, and 7. Yeah. I think Golden Guardians at last, like, that's an easy pick. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with it. But then again, you well, actually disagree okay, with yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree, yeah. but go ahead. And then Immortals at 9, like, I think these are, like, the really easy ones. Golden Guardians 10, Immortals 9. Like, it can happen differently, but most analysts are going to put it this way. FlyQuest at 8, also kind of easy for me. I think FlyQuest is actually really inflexible. Like, we can talk about Pyre Beeple, Ignar, like, oh, they took SKT to Game 5, and then they never really evolved beyond that. Like, Pyre Beeple, he does not play certain very meta champions. Like, Irelia, Akali, these were so core. And I think he had one Irelia game the entire year. So if the meta doesn't hit right for FlyQuest, they're going to be a bad team. And as for EG, I talked about why they won't make playoffs, so I won't repeat myself. Yep. Yeah, I think we went into a lot of this. I mean, yep. I'm surprised that you have Dig at 10. Like that's that's a real crash and burn from that team. That's a that's a froggin that's a froggin Hooney team at 10. So Afro that's like, too, froggin Hooney Afro. Yeah, but but Afro like for, for me like he's we've seen him at 10th, right? Like yes. we've seen him play. So like for for me I can kind of under like I could see him in I've never seen Froggen like even when Froggen was on really bad teams besides Echo for Echo Fox like right. He was like besides for that one spot on Echo Fox, he's normally able to carry like a team that looks more shit than Dignitas on paper to like at least like 7th or 8th. So I, I have like and, and also like Hooney, like I'm like Hooney's never been he's he's had bad splits. He's never been like tenth place bad. Yeah. In my mind. And I I don't I don't again that clutch the, the beginning of clutch wasn't the smoothest thing for him when when he signed over. But for me it's we've seen Grig and Froggen play together and it was on that team that you very much just said where it's like that was the team where it didn't really work out were they the issues not necessarily Keith was on the team as well wasn't the greatest but we've seen that play out and Grig couldn't even work his way in a spot when he was given an opportunity last season against Acadian the other guy that was on that 10th place team so mm -hmm. to me who I, I don't know about that wait, the wait, one wait, person I, that uh, offsets that is Huni. Huni is such a win condition and Huni is so good at beating shitty teams because Huni's putting on so much pressure. If you have a weak top laner and the jungler is playing towards Huni, Huni will give you wins just by himself. So I think a team, we can discount Froggen. We can discount Grig. Like we can do all that, but Huni alone will give you, I feel like at least four wins in the LCS throughout the 18 games. I think, I think, I think get Froggen will give wins. you another couple. Froggen mm -hmm. will get you another couple as well. But that's the thing. I think they counteract each other because they can be so... You, you can only play at one place if you're Grig. And oh, now you've got two guys here that are like, no, no, no. play around. I, 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 completely, I completely disagree with that. So Cooney is a very draft resource heavy player. He wants bans. He wants to counterpick. Froggen is the opposite. You have to ban out Velkots, Karthus, and Nibia for Froggen. And Froggen's always blind picking. Froggen isn't the player to be like, I need 10th pick because I need to get my special counterpick. It's, I'm going to blind pick Karthus, I'm going to blind pick Anivia. So they play really well in terms of resource. And when you get into the in-game, it's also the same thing. Froggen is, don't fucking come to my lane. I'm going to build a 20 CS lead by 15 minutes. Don't fucking gank me. I won't get ganked. Yeah. Huni is, give me the ganks 24-7. I want to keep Froggen's diving like, top. Froggen's like, don't come to my lane and I'm not going to go to yours. Like, that's yeah. just how he fucking plays. So they actually, while you can think of them as selfish player and you can think of them as very specialized players... The fit for Froggen and Huni is really good. All right. I 
disagree with that. And then the other thing is on the bottom side. Can you tell me which part you disagree with? Like out of the things I said regarding Huni and no, Frog no, no. and why they're a good I, fit? I agree with all those things, right? You made some very mm-hmm. good points. My point is when things are going well and Huni's played around, then he's fine. With Froggen is played around, he's fine. When they need to both be played around, I don't think that there's enough that goes around for both of them. Both Where's the draft. overlap? Because not you're not going to be able to ban everything out to get the right thing for Huni. And just but because of that, especially when you have a rookie, I haven't even got to the bottom lane yet, when you have mm-hmm. a rookie AD carry. I know Dom's like, hey, he's super high on him. I don't know a lot about him. Uh, what I do know is that... Uh, you know, I'm, it's very much that mob mentality where we're being apologetic. I do agree that we were hard on Afro and not hard enough on Bang, but that should have been a bot lane that was supposed to perform, and it did not perform. And, you know, one of them looked better than the other, and that was Bang looking better than Afro. Now Afro has a rookie that he needs to work with. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, I like I like Afro with a rookie, though. I prefer Afro with a rookie over Afro with somebody like Bang. That's because, true. Because um, somebody like... So when, when I think about it, I think about like uh, like, like a young AD carry, right? Uh, not necessarily rookie, but somebody like Cody's son, for example, when they played together on 100 Thieves uh, in 2018 and how well they clicked. I feel like Afro like has his own strengths, like where he's like good outside of lane. He, he has an idea of like how to win the game or how he wants to win the game. And um, he wants to like lane with somebody who knows laning super super well i'm like the only thing you need to know about johnson because like that's pretty much all you've seen is that he had four accounts in the top 15 over 1k lp in season nine um as an ad carry main all with insane win rates just solo queued only he's just like this solo queue fucking monster so normally when you see a solo queue monster from my perspective it's really good mechanics really good early lane phase like that's just what they they're strong on so i think that that it should be good for um it should be good for for that ball lane for Afro to be like. I think they complement each other well. Afro's good outside of lane. Johnson's good in lane. He'll understand like what Afro needs to do. Like he'll he'll be good at, at being like, hey, you need to use your abilities on this guy. You need to like play this lane in this way for me to win it. You know. All right. Well, I guess we'll find out as the season unfolds next season. Yep. So those are our yep. top or our bottom four. So. Uh, Dom and I have the same teams there in different order. Loco, you have EG here, which means you think that one of these teams will be on in there, which is, of course, Dignitas. Let's show the rest of them there. And there are your top six, the rest of them in there. The only other one that we all agreed on was TL at the top. Uh, Loco, you're pretty low on TSM. You kind of outlined it a little bit. But why don't we start there with TSM all the way down at four with me and Dom thinking that they're going to be Wait, second. you said, uh, it didn't, wasn't your take that TL wasn't going to win the split, Loco? Yeah, I don't think they're going to win the split, but they can f- still finish first, right? In regular season. Oh, that's what this is? I thought yeah. this was just like tier list of like where teams are going to finish. Okay. Well, I'm, we can talk, we can talk about it. We can still talk about the placements with it. Yeah. I think, I don't think TL will win. But I also, I, I don't think TL wouldn't win, but they are still the most likely to win. I agree. I agree with that. Okay. So I'm, I'm not saying it's over for TL, but it's just not 2019 TL. And I think people are giving them such a free pass as like it's 2019 TL. Wait, what? Wait, hold on. Run that by me again. Mm. So you don't think that they will win, but you think that they're the most likely to win? Yeah. So if you think they're the most likely to win, why don't you think they'll win? So let's say TL has a 40% chance of winning. And then everyone else combined has 60% chance of winning. Yeah. Then it's more likely that TL doesn't win the entire in, entire playoff because the other teams have 60%. Sure, 60% but likelihood. if you still had to pick one team to win, then you'd pick TL, right? Yeah, but I think last year it was completely reversed. I think they had 60% chance to win. Yeah, I, I agree against with Against the field. Yeah. Against, like, against everybody uh, else, they were so much better than everyone else. I don't think so right now, and I agree with what Loco's saying. So the, last year, if there was some, there was a gun to my head and someone asked me, who do you think is going to win, TL or everybody else? I would have said TL. This year, when there's a gun to my head, I say everybody else, not TL. Yeah, the option yeah. isn't one other team. The option is anybody else, then I would take anybody else, not just yeah. one team. But if it's one team, then yeah, it's TL is the team that would theoretically have the best opportunity to win. Uh, you're high on C9, Loco. Yeah, I think I agree with Dom regarding the Zven part. I like C9 CLG. This one, that one was like the hardest for me, like placing C9 CLG TSM because I think they'll be really close and they all have problems that they can work on and they all have potential pop up players. But yeah, I think C9 can be really good. I think CLG can be really good. I guess if I did it again, maybe I swap CLG and C9. Oh, 
Oh, so you think CLG is going to be better than C9? Too many. Yeah, I think there's definitely potential for it. Why do you think that they're going to be so good? They swapped one player or two players, I guess. But yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, the the support swap doesn't even mean anything. I think Smoothie Stixay wasn't the greatest fit. Or not not Smoothie Stixay, excuse me. Um, Bio Stix. Yeah, Bio Stixay wasn't the best fit. And I also don't think Bio was the best for CLG. Like, he was so ready to get out. And I think Smoothie kind of jaded by TSM, not like, oh, TSM fucked me over, but more so like I wasn't the biggest problem. There were other things going on in the team and looks like I'm getting shifted around. So I think he's going to have another really good split. And I really, really believe in Crown. I think Crown wasn't in the best situation on Optic and he still showed that he was a top tier mid lane. And I think this year on a better situation in CLG, I think he's going to be amazing. I, I I am not super high on CLG. Like, I yeah. just don't see why they would be super, super good again. I think that CLG ended up looking better than, like, I mean, like they're a team that fucking lost it to, to Clutch, like, per the fucking world spot last last year. So, like, they, they, they did not seem like, like a solid team to me. Um, I, I don't feel like they have any really top players besides for Crown. And even Crown, I, I had him as fourth last year. I think he's still about the fourth best mid laner in the league. Like, I don't, I'm not super, super high on Crown. I think that Ruin became more and more of a liability. I think that Ruin got worse as the split went on, from my perspective. Because at the beginning of the split, I was like, damn, he's somebody who you can play away from. He doesn't need resources, and he's always going to be serviceable. And he had really good, like, macro knowledge. That was, like, the reason why I thought he was good. Like, he just did his own thing. You know, like, he understood, hey, where he needs to be on the map, when to TP to team fights. Like, he had a good idea of, like, how the game should be played. Mm-hmm. But I think that at this point, his mechanics are really going to get um, exploited especially because teams are going to be so top focused uh, this this year like when you look at at like the fact that um someday is back back at LCS this year you have you have Huni who's who's playing well and Huni for for my moment my money dicked him in the game in the five game uh set that they played um mm-hmm. for for worlds when you when you have impact when you have broken blade with Dardock up there like you're going to need a jungle and a top laner that are willing to play together because jungle cuz top lane is the easiest lane to fuck right like top lane mm-hmm. is just absolutely the easiest lane to fuck and i just don't think that 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 he's going to be able to to hold his own so uh yeah i mean i think the fact that they have a seventh the seventh best top laner like for me i just can't see them getting getting higher than fourth i can't see them outperforming tl tsm or c9 like i look at i look at blabber licorice i look at Dardock, Broken Blade, Impact, Broxa. I look at those, and then I'm looking at Ruin Wiggly. Ruin Wiggly. Ugh, that's gross. <laughs> like I don't want to see that shit. That's that's disgusting. Okay, that that right there is just you. You can't place higher than fourth. I don't think C9 or CLG are as shiny as TSM. I love the allure of TSM. I love what TSM can be. I see the potential there. But potential is potential, and I think there's a lot of risk with the TSM roster. So maybe later in the season, I'll change my mind if things click for TSM. But there's still a lot of question marks there. <laughs> like, I, I, all right, I just want to remember this moment when mm-hmm. when we're in like week seven, week eight, and Ruins is getting bent over every game. All right, That's then I'll, I'll then I'll admit I'll wrong. But also okay, by right. week seven, week eight, if there's fires at TSM house, you'll have to admit you're wrong. Okay, sure. Sure. If there's fires at, at TSM House, I'll, I've always had Darlox back. I've always been like a little bit delusional about him. Like even when I knew him in solo queue, right? Like I'm the person that got Darlox into the scene. Like I've, I'm the one that fucking hunted him down from solo queue, moved him into the TL house. So I always was like, oh, he's toxic in solo queue. He won't be toxic in a team environment. I've always been on the hopeful side of Darlox. So if I'm wrong again, you know, maybe it's time to just get off the hype train. What do you think changes this year? Like just playing with Bjergsen, playing on their TSM? Yeah. What I think changes, mm-hmm. just yeah. like the fact that everyone else is so accomplished compared to him. Like mm. everyone else has either been to a final or won a final, right? Like on his team. Like Biofrost champion, Bjergsen champion. Kabi went to Worlds twice, went to the finals with Splice. Um, you, you, you look at Broken Blade. I think that just naturally, Darnak is going to respect Broken Blade a lot. I feel like he that's the type of player that Darnak always gets along with. It's know? like Lorlo's situation, though. Yeah. I heard Darnak Broken Blade are really good friends. Like they hang out mm-hmm. a lot, they do a lot, they love playing with. Yeah, each but other. I think, but but this is the thing. I think that Darnak never syndrome. really. I think that Darnak never really respected Lorlo as a player. I think, I think Darnak always truly like in his in his heart believed that Lorlo was kind of bad. But I think that he thinks that that Broken Blade is actually like a solid fucking good player. I think that Broken Blade's an impressive player, um, and I, th- I think that just realistically, Broken Blade's just a better player than Lorlo. So, um, yeah, when I look at the team, I just feel like this is like a team because there's always been players on the team that you could tell he didn't respect mm-hmm. when on all of his blowups, right? 
like when he was on Immortals, he he obviously did not think that Pobalto was very good. Like mm-hmm. they they had a lot of conflict there. When he was on CLG, there was problems with Afro. He thought that Afro was kind of washed. When he was on TL, he always had low opinions of, of Lorlo, low opinions of of um low, low opinions of, uh, of Piglet at points. When he was when he was on uh when he was on uh, Echo Fox, right? He oh, we can name so good. many players. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he thought Huni was really good, but he he thought their bot lane was dirty enters. Being if I'm being frank, so like mm-hmm. there's always been like some there's always been like a scapegoat, right? There's always been somewhere where it's like, oh, whatever goes wrong, these players fucking suck. So like mm-hmm. whatever problem I have, like I don't want to even talk about it unless we're talking about the bigger problem, which is the fact that these guys are inting every single game. There's no like inters on this team. Like so everyone is actually good. Everyone is good, but just because you're a good player doesn't mean you have great, good, consistent performance throughout the whole year. There's gonna be problem. There's gonna be times where Broken Blade is being bad for a week or two. There's gonna be times where maybe their bot lane isn't doing well. For, like that's where the problem arises, right? Because mm-hmm. people aren't perfect. People had bad weeks, and when people have bad weeks and people have problems, like the problem just gets bigger and bigger. But, but it's in so the much. Past. It's so much different when a player like Broken Blade has like a bad week or two, and it's like, oh well, so like. Like literally less than a year ago, he was one v nining. Like he was going to be the MVP of finals if TSM won the finals, right? Like he was mm-hmm. hard shitting on impact in these games. Like he's he's a fucking huge carry. Bjergsen, you can never discredit. Like he's he was literally like the NA goat for like five six fucking years. Kabi is is so consistent. I think that Kabi just won't have those terrible weeks, right? Like mm-hmm. maybe Biofrost has some bad weeks, but Biofrost is also a champion and somebody that I think has the team's respect as well. I feel like there's just so. Like their players are so good overall, and it's fucking TSM is the other mm-hmm. thing. Is like this is the team that Darnox always wanted to play for. Like this mm-hmm. is like the team that Darnox always wanted to be on, even in 2016, when when you benched him for fucking behavior problems. Where did he go? <laughs> where did he go? He went to the TSM house in Korea and tried mm-hmm. out for TSM while in Korea. Like he fucking he's wanted to be on this team for a while. Like this, I feel like this is just the best situation for him. So like. And he's more mature now. He's older. He's more mature now than he was back then as well. So I feel like all these things combined are why I think he, like it'll be it'll work out this time. Okay. I feel like it's also a match made in 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 their careers. I think the window is starting to close for TSM and for Bjergsen. You know, he's been around for such a long time. And although Joshi Boy is real young, this is kind of as you said, as many teams as he's been on, this is his last chance. So it's almost like we said it's his last chance. So. I think like three times. I think there's been so many times where people have said it's Dardock's last chance. I don't think Dardock ever believes it's his last chance. And I don't think... I, I'll, I'll say this. If things don't work out for Dardock, maybe he won't play for a top-tier team, but he'll be on an LCS roster again. I, I don't think it's ever his last chance just due to how little talent we have. Hmm. All right, we'll see. Yeah, I guess. we'll see. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll, we'll have to see. We disagree. Uh-huh. Um... So, oh, I want to ask Daniel about it. Why do yeah. you have EG at three? I think it's Cloud9 light. And the reason why I have him in front of Cloud9 is I think there's just a lot of moving parts in Cloud9. I think with the, you know, Blabber going full time, you have Licorice there who spent a little bit of time out, which gave, you know, Kumo and even an opportunity to play and show off what he's got. And then you're giving. What is it? It was the two point, the big move of the offseason. Well, haven't even talked about it. We're giving Vulcan two million dollars, two point one million dollars, however much that move cost. Uh, see, we're not giving that to Vulcan. We're giving that to Dignitas. Vulcan salary is on the lower end. That's the idea, why. the idea is the pressure of that. That was the biggest move that we made in, in the offseason for as the LCS in general. Cloud Nine makes it after shipping off their MVP <laughs> candidate. I think it's just all right now. Now that you're in the big boy seat, how are you going to do? Right, and we've seen supports be given different questions. All right, Bio. Now that you're not with Double Lift, how are you going to do? You're with Stixay, who's a proven talent. I know you're with uh, Sven uh, for Vulcan. It's I know you're with Sven now, a proven talent. But how are you going to do? I think that's just a big ask for a younger player who I think is a fantastic support, top three, top four, but their success is based off of how all of them come together. It's just a lot of moving pieces. Mm. I, I just cannot see Easy do well, like this fall. Easy top three, like for them to be better I, yeah, than C9 and CLG. Mm-hmm. Yikes. I think I the other see- thing is I'm, I'm high on Jazuki as well. Like just watching him for a while, a little bit of 
old insider knowledge after you left Loco, when we're looking at mid laners to replace mm -hmm. Jazuke's name did come up. He was under contract. We didn't make contact with him. There was no illegal thing. But since then, I had been watching him, and I'm like, this dude feels kind of like gated. It was like him and uh, uh, was it Attila? I think for a while yeah. they were just kind of stuck together on that team. And I was like, bro, Damn. he had Gilius at his as his jungler, man. It was fucking ELO <laughs> hell for a while. So that's what I'm saying. So I think Jazuke is an import that can come in and have a big impact as a carry, like Niski has i think niski has a lot more flexibility that was than 2018 Zizuke. 2019 Zizuke. if i think Zizuke has been consistently worse i know last season was injury ridden and vitality has so many other problems with it but that doesn't make me more confident well, okay, right so, so that definitely a, makes me less confident th there's a couple problems that i had i had with that roster number one i think jack troll just fucking sucks <laughs> What's the word Straight up. Word, I, I think jack troll just sucks that's my that's my interpretation i don't know what other people think I've always just had that opinion that he's just kind of like he's just not somebody who you want to to have on your team. And also, I just think that they never found synergy with Mowgli. I think Mowgli was like very, very like kind of shy to the situation. Like he was just trying to fit in, and they didn't really have much direction. And I think that made um, the whole team just like not function. When you have a jungler that isn't confident, and you don't really know where the jungler is going to play, or like you don't, there's not like a defined like formula for the team to win. It's so hard to like perform well as a mid laner i think but yeah yeah so i think all those things combined and plus you have the built-in already built-in synergy of a top team and high pressure situations with the three cloud nine pieces i think it's a little bit easier to integrate uh a player coming on in uh like jazuke so that's why i have eg so high i i i might be wrong on that but i think that's a take of mine uh that i'm willing to stand by as we go through the season uh, the last team that I wanted to touch on that all of us really haven't talked about, it's the least talked about team right now, 100 Thieves. So we all have 100 Thieves kind of like in that middle of the pack, playoff realm. They make the move to go with Ryoma. They bench Ryu, go with Ryoma there. They bring back Meteos. They have someday back in that uh, roster. How do you feel about them as a, a team? Cody Sun also coming back. How, how do you feel about that team? So my read on 100 Thieves and what I heard in scrims is mismatch. So... I'm a little bit confused. So from my read on 100 Thieves, I thought they were going to have solid bot lane. Their mid lane was going to be problematic and the other pieces were going to do well. Well, have you and heard that their I, mid lane's like faker? In I heard their, no, I heard their mid lane is <laughs> just middle of the pack, like very serviceable doing his job. And I heard their bot lane is problematic. So I, I was kind of surprised because stunt, if you're going to talk solo queue, like was the best solo key support in yeah, 2019, he, he, in my opinion. He's, he's so good to play with. And like when I see a player like that, I just don't know how it doesn't transfer over to competitive. Because mm -hmm. when he plays solo key, right? Like when you get him as his like as your support, he always knows what the next thing to do is, right? There's never mm -hmm. a time where like I disagree with him on what the next objective is or something. Or like when he like roams, it always makes sense. It feels like he reads the game so well. But there's always been a disconnect in pro play. And I'm I always wonder when I when there's a player like that, is it them like not having people buy into them and then like when they don't have full control like that because in solo queue you actually just do whatever you want right mm -hmm. when you don't when you have to listen to other people does that just cloud their judgments to the point where they just can't perform as well like does the communication actually make them worse because well, there's players that, that i see like that like tf, TF mm -hmm. blade for example right tf blade when he's in solo queue it's like he always knows the right thing to do he knows when to tp knows which lanes to go to etc and then when you have like other people talking to him in comms it like clouds his judgment and then he just does things he normally wouldn't do and i feel like maybe stunt is in that same boat yeah, and also Cody, you were really high on Cody last mm -hmm. year, saying yep. stuff like Cody's almost as good as double lift. Yeah. And I was pretty high on Cody too. I don't yeah. think he's almost as good as double lift, but he's the, definitely a top tier AD carry. Yep. So to hear 100 Deeps is having problems around bot lane and like mid is doing fine against the field, like I'm very surprised. So I so, still have 100 Deeps at five, but I'm kind of like, what's going on? I feel like Medios and Cody will be solid and I feel like everyone else will be up and down and that's why I just can't put them over there. Because like when I look at, at the other teams, right? Like I see their winning formula, right? And I, with 100 Thieves, it just feels like your players are going to probably perform well, but do you have like the, the person that's going to just be able to like get all the ducks in a row and lead your team to victory? I, and the reason why I have uh, EG over them is exactly what I said about Sven, Scare and Zazel. They're used to winning. They have a winning formula. They like regardless of who they played with, they were the ones that set up the victories. And then like, I feel like just if you just plug and play, like, all right, so you have Kumo instead of Licorice. Obviously Kumo's not as good as Licorice, but he can probably fill a similar role where it's like, okay, 
you just go split. Like we tell you where to go. And then we, we like do our vision around you, et cetera. Like, I feel like, like it's a lot easier for them to, to do that. Whereas like, I'm not sure if, if, uh, Medios Cody's son like are going to be able to actually lead the team to victory. I feel like it's going to be like Medios has a good early game and then they have like a really shit mid, mid game where they get caught a lot and, and whatever. And then late game Cody's son can carry. That's how I view that team. Hmm. Yeah, I think it, a lot of the you hit a lot of the points there. Uh, how do you rate it, it? We talked about a lot of the question marks on the bottom side of the map. How do you rate this 2v2 of Medios and someday compared to everyone else? We've seen it before, but now I, they I don't know, really man. understand. I'm so, I'm like, so, Okay, so maybe I'm delusional about someday. I really don't think someday is that good. <laughs> I don't think he's that good. I forgot, I, think, I forgot that's your take. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my take. Like when I when I look at top laners in the league, right? I would take four, four top laners over him easily, right? Mm-hmm. The four that I would take over him easily would be Impact, Impact Licorice, Broken Blade, Hooney. Yeah. Like, and someday even like, and even even Hanser, even Hanser, mm-hmm. I think is is potentially better than him too. So I just don't have that much like. Like, I don't know. I just don't believe that someday is like still a 1v9 god, still a carry like that. I don't think he's ever been a 1v9 god, at least not he in was, NA. He, well, I he think was, his, kind of. his, his flavor was very different. He's always been very independent and he's always done more than what he's given, mm-hmm. but he's not been the 1v9. Give me all the carries, give me the resource, give me the jungle ganks, and I'll carry. It's more, I'll do my job better than everybody mm-hmm. else, so there's more to go around. And I don't think you want to be that kind of player as an import unless your team is stacked. If your team is stacked, go be impact. Go be someday. But if your team isn't stacked, you have to be a greedy carry. So I think that's where points get taken off for someday. I mean, it's just like even even when I was watching him in, in competitive play, I just like wasn't or, or like or sorry, in academy last mm-hmm. season. I just like I've I've been very unimpressed with him. Like I remember distinctly like a match that I watched um, when he was playing against FlyQuest Academy where he's playing Renekton into Akali and just getting solo killed level three by like, I know revenge is good mechanically, et cetera. I just don't see a world where you should be losing as Renekton versus Akali in lane. And like, sure. Revenge is just like, he, he didn't have a good idea about like how to play waves. So someday still ended up with the advantage in that game. But I feel like those, like those disconnects or those like pitfalls in lane versus better players. Like you're not recovering versus, versus somebody who's better. Like you're not recovering versus fucking licorice. If you give him a solo kill that early. I just I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think if anything, someday will be very solid in lane and he'll carry his weight. It's just as an import, he's not going to be able to give you the same kind of firepower that a lot of the other imports are giving you. Well, it's yeah. his last chance as well. And when you talk about stunt, that was that was the other point I wanted to make. When you talk about stunt, this is a guy that's been just hanging around for such a long time, right? He was back. Was he before Immortals? Was he on like Team Liquid Academy? Was he a part Flight of that? He was, on, he was on. He was on. FlyQuest Academy. No, 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 no. Back, oh, it was P1. That's what it was. It was P1, P1 Immortals, uh, the FlyQuest Academy, Team Liquid Academy, I think, for a little bit. He was like a third player on one of these rosters where he wasn't the Academy player, but he was hanging around such a long time. And there's always been this mystique about it, everything that Dom said. Why it doesn't translate, whether it was... I don't think he's a bad person. He's very happy-go-lucky kind of person. How does it translate? I don't know. And if if I didn't think that Viper was the one that needed to step up because he has the biggest opportunity, I think this is Stunt's also uh, last chance because he's been around for such a long time and there's always this like, but there's always someone better or you'd rather take someone with a better attitude. No, Stunt is good. That's the thing that's weird. Like, Stunt is really good. Like, we talked about how good he is in solo queue. Yep. It's just something's not working. Something's not translating. Yeah, I'm just not sure about this team. Like, I just don't... I can't see a world where 100 Thieves, EG, are better than the top four that I have. Like, I think the top four are pretty solidified in my mind. Yeah, me too. I think So we have the same top four, and then we have the same five and six, five, six, seven. Or same top... Same pool of top four, same pool of five, six, seven, and same pool of eight, nine, ten. Just yep. orders are a little different. Yeah, for me, Ruin, I just have images of Ruin just getting clapped. So I think... We talk. You've talked about it, Loco. Like TSM's kind of this team that hits the ceiling at like second place. To me, I think CLG hit that ceiling, and I don't think switching Crown for Power of Evil fixes the issues that they had. It gives them more firepower. Crown was consistently our fourth best mid laner um, last season. I, mean, I think Power of Evil played pretty well last season, though. Exactly. I didn't think Power of Evil was bad. Exactly. Like I felt so like I, you didn't fix the mm-hmm. issue. You just kind of went one for yeah. one. Exactly. That's why I have them in the exact same place. They're fourth. <laughs> and now they're going to be fourth again. Well, I guess technically they were. Th- were they third? 
Did they end third? I don't remember what they, they did. They didn't end the season. Th- they didn't end 2019 third because they didn't go to Worlds and um, Clutch was the better team. I'm yeah. trying to... They no, did but, beat but, Clutch. But clutch they beat, yeah, they beat Clutch to be they, third. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they were technically... No, no one mattered. Dude, fucking... I got, I got third in that fucking 2015 split. We missed Worlds. No one gave a fuck. Like, that mm-hmm. doesn't matter when you get third in that fourth place match. That That is... That is a fucking... Ne- Going into 2020, it it's will matter because there's no yeah because yeah, there's no gauntlet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Fuck the gauntlet. All right, cool. Well, those are all the topics that we had to hit on. Uh, you saw our preseason list, our players on the hot seat, our five hot takes, and our takes on uh, Pope Belter getting to start this season and the new LCS format. If you guys saw anything you like or want to hit up the discussion, make sure to hit up the YouTube channel afterwards. Dom's going to go ahead and post that one. We'll also get a podcast out there for just you audio listeners to listen to on to Spotify. We'll have that up later on in the month. Uh, Loco Dom, any last thoughts? Um, I mean, watch face check. I think this year of 2020 LCS is going to be a lot more exciting. I really believe like, the top is going to get shuffled a lot compared to what it was before, where it was so clear. It was like TL number one. I still think it's likely that TL's number one, but there's going to be a lot of shuffling. Mm-hmm. Anything, Dom? Yeah. No, I mean, it's fun. This is going to be like, yeah, this is going to be a good year. I'm going to be doing a lot of content around LCS. I'll be uh, doing some stuff with like live reviews of the games, and then also we'll be doing face check, and then I'll be doing another show named uh, The Crackdown. So, I'll be doing a lot of content around professional play this year, so I hope you guys enjoy it. When's the crackdown start? Uh, this crackdown starts on Wednesday at 10 a.m., so 22nd and 10 a.m. All right, and then, of course, make sure to tune in to Twitch Rivals tomorrow to watch Dom <laughs> do his thing. Yep, uh, for sure. Definitely be calling you out as much as I can, both good and bad. Uh, <laughs> you guys will tune in. It'll be me, Doa, and Pyrotechnics, I think, is the other caster that's coming in to uh, help out with that. So make sure to tune on in. Did you guys figure out a name yet for uh, this team? Shadow Dogs won last season. What are you guys? Oh, uh, we are the Monster Boss Legends of Swag. That's what we are. <laughs> what? Ta- um, who named uh, that? Fucking ass t- who do you think named that? <laughs> Look at our team. Who the fuck do you think named that, Loco? <laughs> Shadow Boss Dogs was actually Legends. a good name, though. Oh. That's uh, Shadow Dogs Unleashed is pretty good. Monster Boss Legends of Swag. You need does something right. At least the Shadow Dogs were unleashed. Yeah. What are you guys well, doing? Uh, well, un- unfortunately, they they denied our first name, which was the Monster Boss Genetic Alpha Legends, and then in parentheses of Swag. Um, they they denied that name for being too long. So now we're just the MB Los, which are the Monster Boss Legends of Swag. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, yep. make sure to tune in and watch the MB Los. Loco, why weren't you in uh, Twitch Rivals? I know we talked about it, but you should let it I, I had I had really shitty internet because of like the Spectrum thing, and I haven't been playing as much. <sighs> Need to get you back in to uh, bounce back from your... Was it 0-6? Was it 0-6 or did you, get, did you get a win? Did we get one win? I don't even remember. I don't think you guys got yeah. a win. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll, jo- we'll join you. We'll be 0-6 as well. Don't worry. All right, Dom. We'll be the 0-6 club. All right, guys, LCS this weekend. Make sure to watch that. Give us your thoughts on Twitter, on YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff. Rate us. And then tune in next Tuesday. That's the big change that we're making with our show. We're going to be having it on Tuesdays since LCS is happening on Mondays. So Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Other than that, we'll catch you guys later. For next time, take care. Oh, I got to switch this. (laughs) All right, we're Mm -hmm. muted.